with the call. Enjoy the game, everybody. See you back here at the house. And welcome, everyone, to SEC football on ESPN Primetime as the West Virginia Mountaineers take on the Auburn Tigers in already what has been a very compelling, intriguing day in college football. An upset out in Seattle. Washington downs USC right here, the second meeting all time between West Virginia and Auburn. And some 85,000-plus fans, rain-soaked fans, still showing a lot of temerity and hanging on. Here's how it all developed today. It started off with a 50% chance of rain. Well, that 50% gradually grew and grew to 70, 80, and then the ominous skies told what was coming up next. A torrential downpour as the skies opened up for about 30 minutes, about 20 minutes before kickoff. They emptied the stadium, or at least told the fans that they had to leave, some deciding to stay at their own risk. Those ones right there. They had to wait 30 minutes before they saw the last lightning strike before they brought the players and the fans back out into the stadium and on the field. There's a look at Bill Stewart, the head coach of West Virginia. The headline for them, life after Pat White. What are they going to do without their four-year starter? Meanwhile, for the Auburn Tigers, Gene Chizik is their new first-year head coach, former assistant coach here at Auburn as early as back as 2004. He has tried to put the bite back in the program this year. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. Bob, we were supposed to, well, be in about the second quarter right now, kicking off almost an hour ago. But today when we see the actual two teams on the field in just a few minutes, we get a look at pretty much some new wave offense. Mike, Mark, right now across the country in offensive football, there's three styles of offense that are really hot. You have all the different kind of spread offenses. You have the Wildcat. You have the Pistol. Well, tonight you're going to see all three of those offenses run and run well by both teams. And this really is the next generation of offensive football. You're going to see it all here tonight. From an X and O standpoint, you will not see a more innovative college football game offensively all year. Bill Stewart is a former longtime assistant coach at West Virginia. Took over a season ago going 9-3. and three. He took over from Rich Rodriguez, subsequently moved on to Michigan. Meanwhile, Gene Chizik is in his first year, former head coach most recently at Iowa State. And he was a member of the staff here as late as 2004 when Auburn went undefeated. Well, the Tigers winning the toss, deferring to the second half. West Virginia will receive the opening kick. And you can't say enough, Bob, about the enthusiasm of the fans here at Jordan-Hare Stadium. A good number, a good portion of them deciding to stick out the bad weather here. Forget about ponchos. They just they just took their shirts off and got a free shower. And that high percentage <laughs> of these guys you see right here, that student body from Auburn, and you're all right. I mean, that was an impressive display. I just hope they didn't peak too soon. I mean, there's a lot of football left tonight. They better have some stamina. Yeah, don't want to leave your best cheering in the tailgate. Both these teams coming in with a record of 2-0. That's Tavon Austin back deep for the Mountaineers, along with Noel Devine. Both teams coming off of impressive wins last week. Auburn defeating Mississippi State. West Virginia getting atonement against East Carolina from a loss earlier last year. A short kickoff up to the 15-yard line. That's Devine. And Noel Devine with a nice return out near the 40-yard line. Well, speaking of divine performances, Jarrett Brown, he has been spectacular in his first two starts, completing about 75% of his passes last week, was 24 of 31 with four touchdown passes and threw for 334 yards, in addition to over 70 yards rushing. He is the new quarterback. Take a look at the starters for the Mountaineers at the top of your screen. They come out in an empty formation. Brown under some heat, and he can run. With deceptive speed, Jared Brown tiptoes out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. He picked up about eight on the play. 
Second down and two. And that is exactly what Jarrett Brown did last week against East Carolina. They didn't have many, if any, predetermined called quarterback runs. He is a great scrambler off a drop back pass. And Bob, and we see the tempo that we're going to see for most of the night from both these teams immediately at the line of scrimmage to run the next play. Noel Devine is the lone back behind Jarrett. And here Brown. you see the pistol formation. Look at the size difference between Devine, the tailback, and the quarterback. Little jailbreak screen. Jock Sanders catches it and is collared immediately back at the 40-yard line. And let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Dave & Buster. Well, first for West Virginia, Noel Devine. Not very big, but he's one of the most explosive players in college, college football. Jock Sanders, a lot like Noel Devine, kind of a hybrid wide receiver running back. And on defense, Reed Williams is key. A very experienced player. He was around in the Rich Rodriguez era of hurry-up offense. He has to get that Auburn defense lined up. Good Excuse news. That West Virginia defense. Uh, we'll see. Uh, he's a little bit nicked up, Bob, with a foot injury coming to this. On third and nine. Brown caught at the one-yard line. Bradley Starks and Brown burns Auburn. It all starts with the pocket presence, the elusiveness of Jarrett Brown. Watch here. Anytime you get out of contain, bad things happen for the defense. And Bradley Starks, who was a quarterback, off the scramble by Jarrett Brown. Did he show some arm strength, Bob? <laughs> he launched that. 58 yards on the play. First and goal, Mountaineers. Brown into the end zone, and incomplete. Intended for number 89, Tyler Urban. You'll notice this West Virginia offense, it's been tweaked a little bit. Post Pat White, they will throw the football, or at least call passing plays, a lot more than they have in the past. But anytime this guy drops back the throw mark, he has the potential to take off and run. Jared Brown making his first career road start in a hostile environment. Hands it off to Devine, who gets into the end zone. Touchdown, West Virginia. Well, we saw lightning strikes about an hour ago, Bob. That was a pretty quick, devastating strike right there on the field by the Mountaineers. That guy on camera, that Auburn fan, looked like he was saying, I stuck around for this. But you have to credit West Virginia in that little visitor's locker room. All that time with the delay before the game, but the one big play set up by Jared Brown's elusiveness in the, in the pocket. Bittencourt in for the extra point. And the Mountaineers use all of two minutes and eight seconds to get on the scoreboard. Get the feeling it's going to be a special night here in Auburn on the Plains. It's where amazing happens. There's a look at Noel Devine, who had the seven-yard touchdown run a moment ago. Check that one. And it was a five-play, 60-yard drive, eclipsing about 2.08 on the clock. Here's a look at the weather right now. And in that limited time that we witnessed that inclement weather, there was almost two and a half inches of rain that came down. And, Bob, you look at the field, at least in the early going here, no effects. Yeah, this is a great turf. And, Mark, looking ahead here for West Virginia, one area they've really struggled in as a football team is right here. Kickoff coverage. Last year they struggled. They also struggled against Liberty in their first game of the year. Mario Fannin on the kickoff return for the Tigers. And they did a nice job that time, Bob, covering that kick. Fannin brought down at the 27-yard line. Chris Todd is going to take the reins of this Tiger offense. Todd completing about 55% of his passes coming in. Started three games a season ago and then gave way to Cody Burns at quarterback. It's a storyline we'll develop during the course of the evening. As it was a very divisive issue throughout the course of the season, but this year 
they've decided early that Chris Todd is going to be the guy. First down and 10 for the Tigers. Ben Tate in a tailback. And it's a reverse. Tate hands it off to Zachary. Terrell Zachary getting to the edge and pushed out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Tackled there by Ian Smith, but he picked up close to 10 yards in the first down. You're going to see a bunch of wide receiver motion, a bunch of misdirection, and don't blink because they are a fast tempo hurry up. Not like West Virginia that takes their time at the line of scrimmage. They get that ball snapped now. This is Tate. And Tate makes it up to the 39-yard line. Let's take a look at the impact players brought to you by Dave and Busters. Well, we better go fast. Ben Tate, <laughs> the veteran tailback. He's the power back, averaging 137 yards a game. This guy right here, the true freshman, is electric. Ontario McCaleb and Cody Burns. He is at quarterback right now, and you see the Wildcat. Burns hands it off to McCaleb. And McCaleb is brought down at about the 42-yard line. We're going to do our best to get some replays to you folks, but because of the quick tempo, it's not always going to work that way. Cody Burns was a starting quarterback last year. Watch him out of the Wildcat. Right there, kind of gets a little bit of a crackback block. So that's not a true quarterback playing quarterback. On second and eight, a lot of variables in Gus Malzahn's offense. This time, Michaela brought down behind the line of scrimmage at the 37 by Keith Tandy coming up, providing good support from the cornerback spot. So it'll be third down coming up, and there's a look at the new offensive coordinator there on the plane. Keep your eye on that 40-second clock. He likes to get that thing snapped with about 35 seconds. He's a little bit slow right now, talking about Gus Malzahn. He wants to get that tempo going even faster than this. Third down and 11. Todd in a quarterback throws it up. And that's going to be incomplete, falling harmlessly at the 37-yard line. The closest receiver was Darvin Adams, who was being covered by Keith Tandy. So it's fourth down coming up. What makes Gus Malzahn's offense so unique, Bob? What is it exactly? It's a lot of things. First of all, the up-tempo. It's such a faster tempo than most of the other no-huddle teams in the country. And then you have a lot of wide receiver, a lot of misdirection. It's just a different-looking offense. You'll see that as the night progresses. And right here, this is an area Auburn has struggled with, punt protection. Had one blocked against Mississippi State. Yeah, blocked in return for a touchdown. This one, though, a nice punt by Clinton Durst. A 42-yard effort and a fair catch called at the 21 by Jock Sanders. Well, Peyton Manning and the Colts face off against the Miami Dolphins and their Wildcats. Speaking of Wildcats, Bob, offensive scheme. Colts-Dolphins on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 7 o'clock Eastern time. You talk about the Dolphins with the Wildcat offense. You know, that offense was really started by Gus Malzahn at Arkansas, and Darren McFadden was the quarterback. But really, it goes back to Rich Rodriguez about 15 years ago. Play fake by Jared Brown. Still on his feet. You know, at 6'4", 225 pounds, he can be rather difficult to bring down. You saw an example of that. Josh Bynes and Michael Goggins both missing tackles on that play, allowing Brown Bob to get eight yards. And he really is one of those guys. He's not as fast as Pat White, but he is every bit as elusive. Mark, he just has a knack of making people miss. I mean, the guy's an incredible scrambler based on what I've seen early in this season. Divine. 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 The one. 71 yards. Mother Nature, no factor on this West Virginia Mountaineer offense. Noel Devine with 207 yards last year against Auburn. Talk about speed. Yeah, he, he probably liked that game tape from last year, Bob. Watched it a couple times and said, 
Let me get out here and do it again. Divine already after that 71-yard romp. Close to 100 in this game with an education and acceleration. 14-0 in a blink. Local dealer for a test drive today. And Allstate, proud sponsor of college football and the Allstate Sugar Bowl. Are you in good hands? Well, the Mountaineers have clipped War Eagle's wings so far, Bob. Mark. They're plucking his feathers. 14-0, right. Noel Devine with a 71-yard jog. He's had a couple of touchdowns on the last three plays, and West Virginia has stunned this crowd here that endured the torrential downpour for almost an hour. Zachary and Fannin back deep. This is going to be Zachary at the 25. Terrell Zachary brought down at the 35. One more look at that touchdown. Yeah, let's look at this touchdown. First, I want you to watch the center and the left guard come off and do a great job of zone blocking or area blocking. That's the first thing. Excellent job right there. Now, when he creases the line of scrimmage, stop it right there. Look at the two corners, two very speed corners. Take poor angles and just get outrun. That's Nico Thorpe and Walter McFadden. Mark, he just runs by those two angles. Speed is deadly. West Virginia has had a little bit of success against, quote, unquote, speedy SEC teams in the past. Last year, he had a career game against Auburn, 207 yards as West Virginia rallied from a 17-3 deficit on their way to a 34-17 victory up in Morgantown. Bob, with the style of offense that the Tigers play, how does it affect them that they're in a hole right here, probably, or does it? Probably helps them. I mean, they're in a hurry up from the moment they come out of the locker room. So <laughs> that is no factor as far as time, obviously. On first and 15 after the penalty, Chris Todd keeps himself. And Todd is brought down at the 31-yard line by J.T. Thomas. It'll be second down coming up and about 12 to go. Thomas, Williams, and Lazier, the linebackers for the Mountaineers. Todd has plenty of time and then sacked back at the 27-yard line by Josh Taylor. That's the first sack that Auburn has given up so far this season in this, their third game. Josh Taylor, you're going to see him right here at defensive end, lined up for Scooter Berry, I believe. I think Scooter Berry's out with an injury. That was an excellent sack by Josh Taylor, who was playing defensive end. I expected to see, as you mentioned, Bob, a lot more time, get a few more snaps with Barry a little bit nicked up. Third down and 16 for the Tigers. Todd downfield, and it's caught by Eric Smith, and he gets a Tiger first down into Mountaineer territory. Another one of those hybrid players, Eric Smith, listed as a running back, but he lines up at wide receiver. Todd with excellent time against the three-man rush. Excellent catch, Eric Smith, a 237-pound sophomore. Todd incomplete at the 41-yard line. No flag on the play. It was intended for Ben Tate. The second down and 10 coming up. It probably helps West Virginia, Mark, that they have a bunch of experience on defense. We talked about Reed Williams, the linebacker. They have played against this offense for about five years, particularly when Rich Rodriguez was the head coach. They're used to going to get in practice against this hurry-up tempo. This is an offense that will try and get about 85, 90 snaps a game. Todd completes the pass to Zachary, and Zachary with the first down or close to it. At the 29-yard line, he does get the first down, picking up 15 on that play. That's the first slip we've seen. You see those big chunks of turf right there, Mark? You mentioned about two and a half inches of rain. That's the first time we've seen a player slip tonight. On first and 10, Ben Tate brought down right near the line of scrimmage. May have gotten a yard on the play. 
And as you watch the Auburn players get up, Gus Malzahn coaches his players to try and toss the ball back to the official so they can get it spotted and get going and get up on the line of scrimmage and run that play. Second down and nine. Here's what makes it tough, Mark. The defensive players have to be ready for them to snap the ball, anticipating an early snap. But then when he backs off and checks from the sideline, they have to maintain that stance. That's exhausting on these defensive guys. Todd, incomplete. Intended for number 27, Mario Fannin. And you mentioned a great point about Gus Malzahn preaching to his offensive players to hand the ball to the nearest official. He wants to run 80 plays a game. He wants to snap that football within five seconds of the ball being marked for play. Now, they're a little bit slower right now, probably because it's third and ten. And if they don't get the ball to the official, there's what he calls accountabilities. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even after you score a touchdown, yeah. you don't hand the ball to the that, official. That, that, that's a great word for having to run. Do some bear crawls across the field. A little pressure coming, and Todd under heat. Couldn't complete the pass to Ben Tate. JT Thomas was right in Todd's grill. And it's fourth down coming up for the Tigers. Boy, JT Thomas just came clean that time. Right up the gut. Auburn, the number two rushing offense in the country. Not really a passing team. Interesting situation right here. Go ahead and go for it on fourth and ten. Well, one for two this year in fourth downs, and they call a timeout. Let's take a look back with our Sears Drive recap. And now we got to this point so far. Jared Brown didn't take long for him to get the Mountaineers on the scoreboard. Nice little scramble, show of mobility. And then on the next time he scrambled on the first series, he found his receiver downfield, Bradley Starks, put them to within range for Noel Devine to punch it in. And that was after Devine, Noel Devine, had the long run. So two big explosive plays. Mark, West Virginia only with seven plays in this football game but 139 yards total offense. Now that is explosive. And the nose of the ball on the 29-yard line. Let's talk about Chris Todd a little bit, the starting quarterback. He won the job in the spring as they now decide to change tack here and bring in their place kicker, Wes Byram. This is going to be about a 46-yard field goal. He's three for three on the season, Mark. He does have a 52-yarder in his career. And Byram knocks that through. It's true. Started to talk about Chris Todd and how he won the job in the spring. Showed a lot of superior, well, timing in the passing game. And ultimately, there was a team meeting. Coach Gene Chiswick called the team together, made the announcement that Chris Todd had beaten out Cody Burns, who had started seven games last year, and Neil Cottle. And that, in turn, really served to be a galvanizing experience for the rest of the team. Why? Because this is what Burns had to say right after the announcement that he had lost the job to Todd. The bottom line is it's about Auburn. It's not about one guy. It's not about the quarterback position. It's about us winning games. So, I mean, it hurts. It hurts me. I know it hurts Neil. You cannot let your circumstances dictate who I am. This is about winning games, and we're a team. And whenever's going to happen, I'm going to ride with each and every one of y'all. I just want y'all to know that. Good job. Hey, Mark, the reason that took place and the reason you saw that look of concentration on those other players' faces, when you talk to the Auburn football players, they will tell you this was a divided football team last year. The battle at quarterback between Cody Burns and Chris Todd ended up dividing the team. As that happens a lot of times, give a lot of credit to Cody Burns. He said, this will not divide this football team this year. They learned a valuable lesson last year. There were some players that intimated it may have been divided 
even amongst racial lines, but they have certainly come together after that speech. This is Rodgers on the kickoff return out near midfield at the 50-yard line, giving the Mountaineers good field position. A 45-yard kickoff return, and Jarrett Brown, the quarterback, will have good starting field position. And just back to that Cody Burns story. That's the kind of player you want on your football team. It is the player's football team at the end of the day. You talk about a bitter pill. He wanted to be the starting quarterback this year, but he went ahead and turned it over to Chris Todd and gave Chris Todd his full support. That's how you have something to build on here at Auburn, when you have that kind of character on your football team. They basically said, hey, I'm going to ride with you guys, even though I lost the job, and I want you to get behind Chris Todd. Jared Brown put it on the ground. He fumbled it. Auburn football. Mike Blank made the big hit on Jared Brown to knock it loose. And watch Mike Blank. He's going to line up right here at guard. And just full rush. Number 77, Josh Jenkins knocks that football out of there. And Antonio Coleman, the leader of this defense, comes up with the fumble. You talk about the full bag of tricks right now for <laughs> Gus Malzahn. This is a perfect situation. Hands it off to Ben Tate, plowing forward between the tackles. And Ben Tate down to the 42-yard line, got about three on the play in all SEC selection, ran for a 35-yard touchdown last week in their win against Mississippi State. Air Second down and seven coming up. Air Force number one in the country in rushing offense. The Auburn Tigers number two in rushing offense. Yeah, the only team in the country that has two rushers that average over 100 per game. And this is Tate showing his receiving skills down to the 37-yard line. Picked up about five. Thunder and lightning, Tate and McCaleb. Although Ben Tate kind of chafes at the thunder thing. He says, I, I got a little quick, too. I'm, I'm fast, too. <laughs> well, he's fast. But that guy next to him, that young freshman and about 160 pounds, Ontario McCaleb, he can fly. Look, Cody Burns back in at Wildcat quarterback as Chris Todd goes out the wide receiver right here. Todd keeps it after faking the handoff to Mikhailov and Chris Todd near the first down right at the 35-yard line. So you got to keep your eyes open. Number 18, Todd will come into the game, line up at various spots. We asked Chris Todd in our meetings yesterday whether he was going to actually catch a pass at any point in this offense. He gave us a smile and said that you know, coaches realize what kind of athletic talent I have. I hope so. <laughs> I wonder if you watched Brett Favre in that preseason game. Out of wide receiver when Brett Favre had that crackback block in his first game as quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings. I don't know that I've seen an offense with as many moving parts as Gus Malls on an offense. Keep in mind, he led the country two years in a row at Tulsa, the last two years in total offense. And he's really, four years ago, he was a high school coach in Springdale, Arkansas. Yeah. It's been a, a remarkable climb for this guy. He's turned out some very productive players. On the reverse, this is Burns, the quarterback, wide open, and he overshoots his receiver, Zachary. Gus Malzahn is opening up the whole box of tricks already here in the first quarter. Second down and ten. Watch Zachary. He's going to line up, clear out at wide receiver. They're going to run the reverse. Cody Burns, the wide receiver, running back, quarterback. <laughs> Hasn't had as many reps throwing that football. Yeah, a little Did throw for a touchdown pass last week, though, against Mississippi State. A little rusty, huh? Well, you see why he's not the starting quarterback, <laughs> honestly. Just does not throw it consistently well enough, Mark, to be the quarterback. Chris Todd is the starting quarterback and completes that pass to Darvin Adams for the first down at the 16. A 20-yard pickup in a first down. 
Yeah, you see quickly why Chris Todd won the job. Garvin Adams, 6'3", 185, their leading receiver. Very excellent time drought. Little play fake. Touchdown, Tigers! Zachary! with the touchdown catch. If the receiver's hot, come right yeah. back to him. That was two excellent throws by Chris Todd in succession right there. Got about five minutes to play still in the first quarter and already a lot of points on the board. Chris Todd starting to heat it up a little bit on that last drive. And welcome back, everyone, to SCC Football on ESPN Primetime as the West Virginia Mountaineers take on the Auburn Tigers. You're looking at something called a kudzu, something indigenous to the region going as far back as the 1800s, but has since become the scourge of the South. I mean, that thing covers everything down here on the plains and in other major parts of the Alabama region. Just like how the offenses are covering the field pretty well right now. 14 to 10, West Virginia with the lead. And the fans have, uh, wow, that guy's got a necktie back on. Huh? He got dressed up after the rain. Big tradition down here in the <laughs> south. From the six-yard line, this is Rodgers. And Rodgers brought down to the 27. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you very much. It's a Taco Bell studio update. Florida State and BYU, and it was not the night for BYU, but it was for Christian Ponder. He keeps his scramble six yards. That made it 44-14, 44-21 now at the end of the third. Other top ten teams in action. Texas on top of the Red Raiders, 10-3, and Ole Miss in control over Southeast Louisiana, 24-0 at the half. All right, thanks a lot, Wendy. Florida State bouncing back from that scare they had last week. Here's Noel Devine. What a shake. Man, he stopped on a dime and didn't leave the Tigers any change. First down for Devine, who picked up 14 that time. And watch this move in the hole. Keep your eyes on the linebacker, Adam Herring, right here. This linebacker right here is going to have Noel Devine dead to rights. He got power steering and power brakes, Bob. not the first guy that's done that. <laughs> Trying to tackle Noel Devine. Now. Jock Sanders in motion. Jarrett Brown keeps it himself, falling forward near the 45-yard line. It was Picked interesting. Close to five. Yesterday, Mark, you remember this conversation with Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator. He talked about teaching tackling where players don't ready up or break down before the tackle. The first guy tries to run through and get a big hit. That's exactly what you saw right there with Adam Herring, the linebacker. He ran through and never readied his feet and got in a balanced football position to make that tackle. That's an interesting concept. Second and five, Brown, a complete underneath. And that's going to be a first down at the 45-yard line. A 10-yard pickup. Wes Lyons made that catch. There's Ted Roof, was the head coach at Duke for three seasons. Last year was at Minnesota. But, Mark, I've not really heard tackling taught that way before when you don't tell a defensive player to ready up and get balanced before he makes contact. Is that's that what you mean by breaking down? Yeah, balance, getting in a balanced football position so you're under control. Sounds like he wants his guys to take home run shots. The first guy, anyway. Incomplete at the 40. Jarrett Brown looked a little bit tentative that time. Intended for Arnett. But otherwise, he has been impeccable, not only on the gridiron, but on the runway. Involved in a fashion show earlier this week. Bob, he was working at Catwalk pretty good. 
We a little better, casual look. We better wait till he has a little more success <laughs> before all those Mountaineer fans graciously accept that <laughs> runway model. You know, you're putting yourself out there on more than the runway when you do stuff like that. Man. So one of his teammates at the end of the runway was a little surprised. He thought he was on the down low. Nothing secretive about that run. He keeps it about a yard shy of the first down, picked up close to nine on the play. Jared Brown waited four long, arduous, patient years to become the starter, while Pat White took West Virginia to four bowl games. And he's made good use of his starting time so far, but this is his first road start. On third and short, they get the first down. They give it to Ryan Clark, the fullback. You have to really give Jarrett Brown a lot of credit to stick around that program for four years. How many guys have we seen oh. around the country, Mark, that get impatient and leave? That's why this guy is a leader of this football team. And so far this season, that worth is, that weight has paid off for him and the West Virginia football team. He's been outstanding. On first and ten. There he goes. Brown escapes harm's way and fires another strike complete. Still on his feet. Arnett is going to be first and goal from about the seven yard line. They picked up 26 on that play. Again, you're going to see the quarterback, Jarrett Brown, break contain, Mark. That means he gets outside that tackle box. Auburn comes with the blitz. Craig Stevens had an open shot, but you have to go to his widest shoulder and force Jared Brown to stay in that box. He'll kill you throwing off the scramble. Devine in the backfield beside Brown. Sanders went in motion. They run the little screen to Jock Sanders. Still on his feet. Forward. Wow, Houdini's in the house. He squeezes into the end zone. Touchdown. Just because you're not very big doesn't mean you're not strong. And watch number 61, the center, Eric Job. Come on, Eric. Come on, Eric. Uh, he gave him a little <laughs> nudge in there. But again, these Smurf hybrid guys on this field tonight, those 5'6", five, 5'7", five, 170 running back wide receiver combinations. Mark, there's more in this game than any game I've seen this year in college football. And Bob, as a result, seen a lot of missed tackles, too. It looks like they're going to review this and check to see if his knee touched down before he got into the end zone. But you mentioned, I mean, Jock Sanders and Noel Devine, as we look at this replay again, look at Eric Job. He won the handoff. <laughs> now, as long as his knee's not on the ground, I think that's a touchdown. Yeah. I think his knee actually was on top of the Auburn defender right there, number 25, Darren Bates. Jock Sanders with a big week last week against East Carolina in that victory had nine catches for 99 yards. But you look at Jock Sanders, you look at Noel Devine, Noel Devine they are carbon copies of one another. As a further review, the rolling on the field stands, touchdown. And that's Jock Sanders' first touchdown catch of the season, the eighth of his career. And this problem for West Virginia... We mentioned Reed Williams, the linebacker. We mentioned Scooter Barry, the defensive end. Both their best players out for West Virginia on defense. And I look up in 17-3, there's going to be a lot more points in this football game. Mark. They might have to do it on offense tonight. The extra point good. 21-10 to 10 for West Virginia. Wendy, I know that you're dry back in the studio. Back to you. Mark, I must say we are, and so too is Georgia coming off a hard-fought win over South Carolina last week. They look tired in this one, trailing 21 to 10, but Joe Cox to A.J. Green made it 24-21. They lead 27-21 at the half. High-scoring game there, too. We get a look at Arkansas in a couple of weeks against Texas A&M out at Cowboys Stadium in Dallas. Thanks to see Ryan Mallett. The transfer from Michigan, the big quarterback for Arkansas. But what an offensive explosion by the Mountaineers. Maybe <laughs> they got a little tired of reading all that Gus Malls on Auburn offensive press clippings all the way. 
be saying, hey, check us out. We can, we can do it too. 21-10 with 2.01 to go in the first half, first quarter. We've almost got a half's worth of points already. Zachary and Michaela back deep, meanwhile, for Auburn. Caleb from the 15 and brought down at the 25-yard line. Well, log on to ESPNChicago.com for local coverage of the area's pro teams, including the Bulls, the Bears, White Sox, and the Cubs. It's ESPN.com for Chicago. Check it out. West Virginia right now, 209 yards offense on 16 plays. That's on clip for 800 yards. <laughs> I was doing the math. <laughs> I was asking Steve Labar, stat man, for the calculator. And as high tempo as this Auburn offense is, it's not like Auburn's offense is going to keep the ball for an extended period of time. Their defense is going to be, be back on the field one way or another for Auburn. Here's Chris Todd. Incomplete out of the backfield. That was intended for Mario Fannin. Well, we talked about the two key cogs defensively for West Virginia missing. Scooter Berry, number 93 right there, three-year starter, former fullback and linebacker, has a bad shoulder, got dinged up last week, and uh, Reed Williams, number 47 right there, their starting middle linebacker with a foot injury. Fortunately for West Virginia, Mark, they've been in this 3-3-5 defense for a long time. So there's a lot of continuity with their backups. I mean, it's not like it's a new scheme. Chris Todd had it tipped and incomplete. Number 30, JT Thomas tipped the ball. And it's going to be third down and 10. Thomas, his dad, played linebacker at West Virginia. He's a young man that went to Mountaineer football camps from the time he was knee high. Third and ten. Todd underneath. And incomplete intended for Tommy Trot, who was hit immediately and had the ball jarred loose. 141 to go in the first quarter. Reed Williams, uh, pardon me, Najee Good making the stop. Here's what's happening now. The game beginning tonight after a one hour, five minute delay due to inclement weather. There was a torrential downpour, which included a severe weather warning. And coming up a little bit later, our installment, regular installment of Davy Jones Locker. Three and out for the Tigers. Boy, a nice punt that time by Clinton Durst. Fair catch called all the way back at the 23-yard line by Jock Sanders. Boy, and that Auburn defense right back on the field, Mark. No rest for the weary. Well, Jared Brown there ready to come out once again and take the reins of this Mountaineer offense. Uh, Bill Stewart, his head coach, was his former position coach prior to taking over the job as the head coach. And, boy, Brown must have been listening a lot, Bob, because he looks as poised as any first-year starter, quote-unquote, could possibly be. That pass complete to his roommate, Arnett. Picked up six, and here's the weather that we were talking about a little bit earlier. I mean, the skies opened up, had about two and a half inches of rain. They had to issue a warning to the fans to evacuate the stadium. Those that stayed in remained at their own risk. Finally kicked things off after an hour delay. Second and four. Tell you, Noel Devine hasn't had any problems with the footing 
The guys chasing him have, Bob. Their feet haven't moved fast enough. Well, you also see why they are in that pistol set mark where the back is deeper than the quarterback. You notice that time how Noel Devine, it's a straight north and south downhill running game like the I formation, not like the spread where the quarterback and the running back are the same depth in the shotgun where the running back has to go sideways. Devine, four rushes for 90 yards and a couple of touchdowns already. Jared Brown keeps it himself, nowhere to go. He was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage that time. Josh Bynes making the stop on the play. Bynes, one of the leaders amongst linebackers. He really gets them lined up out there. He runs the operation. One thing to watch for in this game. Whenever I coached in the game where the field was extremely wet, extremely humid it as is tonight, a lot of cramps, a lot of leg weariness. This is an inexperienced, thin Auburn defense. They don't have a lot of backups. They gave up 215 yards in the first quarter. They've been on that football field a yeah. lot, Mark. Yeah, the depth of the Tigers team, not where the coaches would like it to be right now. The first 15 minutes of football in the books and an impressive 15 minutes for Noel Devine and the Mountaineers. They lead at the break, 21 to 10. We'll be back with the start of the second quarter right after this. Welcome back, everyone, to SEC football on ESPN Primetime. West Virginia taking on Auburn, and Noel Devine has had quite a night already. If he had it his way, he'd play Auburn 12 times a year. One of the best <laughs> high school running back highlight tapes I have ever seen in my life. I mean, it was a YouTube classic. You look yeah. right now, 297 yards rushing, three TDs. Going back to last year. Going yep. back to last year. I mean, 90 yards already tonight in this football game. But he was a highlight, human highlight film in high school from Fort Myers, Florida. They have a strong Florida contingent on that Mountaineer roster. Jared Brown, one of them, he's waited four years to take the reins of this offense. Completes the pass. That's Tavon Austin. And you know what, Bob, when you have a Pat White that was quarterback here for four consecutive years, it presents unique circumstances, doesn't it, afterwards and while he's there. Well, normally when you have a quarterback like Pat White, you don't recruit another quarterback in your program for three or four years because they don't think they're going to play. And there's a drop-off. But fortunately for West Virginia, this guy, Jared Brown, stayed in the program, which is uncommon, and there's no drop-off. But this is a unique guy, and not many programs have the luxury of having somebody waited out for four years like Jared Brown did. Brown going to roll out. There's a flag down. All kinds of linen down in the field. Jared Brown doing his best Pat White impersonation and escaping oh, man. and smartly sliding safe at the 41-yard line where Darren Bates unloaded on him. He picked up two. There's, as I mentioned, a bunch of flags down on the field. Well, I'll say this. This play will come back, but it just tired the Auburn defense <laughs> out even more. You look at the Auburn football players right now. They are tired, Mark. Yeah, you saw Bates uh, sucking wind a little bit. Hands on the hips. The official's going to try and sort this one out. But getting back to the conversation about Jarrett Brown replacing White, here's the call. Chop block, number seven on the offense. The penalty is declined, fourth down. And they're going to have to punt. The situation with Brown, similar to like when Ray Rice was at Rutgers for as long as he was. Perennial oh, starter, right? Sure. I mean, anytime there's a great player, you look at Ray Rice, you look at Pat White. It's hard sometimes to recruit a guy. Both these guys played as young players. They were the face of the program. It takes a unique player, number one, to sign and come and say, I'm going to wait. But it takes a really unique player to wait four years like Jared. Hold on. You mean even Bob Davey, the Terminator recruiter, couldn't go in and convince a kid to come? <laughs> Here's the punt from Kozlowski. Back at the 10-yard line, it's Anthony Gully. And Gully out to the 26-yard line, a 51-yard punt, 16 on the return, and back to Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you very much. Sports Center right now. If you're in the mood for an upset, you're in luck. 
Washington upsets USC 16-13 with a 22-yard field goal, three seconds on the clock. A huge upset after that win over Ohio State last week. And Virginia Tech pulls off a close one, 16-15 over Nebraska. The next Sports Center after the Georgia-Arkansas game on ESPN. All right, Wendy and Cody Burns in at quarterback right now, setting up in the shotgun. Fumble! And they were lucky to get it back. Burns falled on the, fell on the loose ball at the 20-yard line. Larry Ford had it right in his arms, in his grasp, and couldn't squeeze the ball. Again, a lot of moving parts. You can see right there, number 27, Mario Fannin, never secured that football to his chest. Auburn very, very, very fortunate to get that ball back. Burns back in the ball game now, sitting up at wide receiver in motion to the top of your screen. Todd incomplete at the 35. That was intended for Darvin Adams. It'll be third down and long coming up for the Tigers. Let's take a look at this offense. This is one of those offenses, Mark, because there's so many moving parts. It can look really, really good, but when it looks bad, as you know with these spread offenses, it can look very, very bad. Now, right there, obviously, Louisiana Tech and Mississippi State, the first two games of the year, they dominate. Right. But right now, I mean, they are out of sync. But with all these moving parts, all the motion, all the reverses, when it goes bad, it goes really bad at times. I guess Malzahn has told us that they substitute a little more than they want to because of depth issues. Todd picked off at the 33-yard line by Goldberg. And the Mountaineers in great field position inside the 20. That's their third interception of the season. Excellent pressure by Najee Good, the linebacker, on the rush. Watch right here, West Virginia. There's number 52, Good. Steps up in the pocket and just flat throws it to the linebacker, Goldborn. Boy, they're going to start things off from the 19-yard line. Like I said, Mark, when it looks bad, yeah. it looks really bad. And this is a tired Auburn defense and a tired Auburn crowd right now that needs a big stop. Tired and wet. West Virginia. Mountaineers First call timeout. Well, Gene Chiswick has said that he's not quite ready to buy stock in his Tigers. The price might be falling a little bit, just a little right now. Back up to the That's not a happy-looking group here at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Some 85,000-plus on hand, and right now watching their team on the wrong end of a 21-10 to 10 scoreboard. And there's a look at the brain trust of the Tigers. Gene Chiswick to the left, Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator. On the bottom, and Gene Chiswick up top. Pardon me, uh, Gus Malzahn up top. An entire new coaching staff at Auburn. All assistants, not one returning from last year's Tommy Tupperville staff. All of them down in the field as well. Here's Noel Devine, nowhere to go, sacked for a loss on the play. Back at the 25, Antonio Coleman leading the way. He was the first one to get there. Bob, what are your thoughts on all three coaches down on the field, neither of them uh, up in the box? I think that's becoming more of a trend, Mark, because of the no-huddle offense. And on defense, you need to be down there to signal because of the, the defensive adjustments to no-huddle. So a lot of it is spurred on because of the style of these offenses. You need to be down there and communicate right from the sideline. Interesting. Brown gave it right back. Nico Thorpe. Oh, oh and Thorpe got Ooh. drilled and held onto the ball. Oh. <laughs> Brian Clark with the hit of the night on the interception. First of all, Nico Thorpe, a great interception. 
Watch this hit right here. That is a great hit by Ryan Clark, the freshman running back. But Nico, you're six foot two. Don't jump up in the air before you're tackled. Jump here. That's a tremendous play, Mark. But watch here at the end. Don't jump up in the air before contact. What? Boom. I mean, he, he exposed himself. But was that a huge, huge play for Auburn? Fourth interception of the season for the Tigers. Ben Tate runs it, picks up about a yard on the play. Brought down by Pat Lazier. Auburn trying to get that running game going. We mentioned two running backs averaging over 100 yards. Just no rhythm yet in this offense. Todd has missed his last five passes in a row with interception. Connects here to Eric Smith. And Smith all the way down to the 29-yard line. First down, Tigers, a 39-yard game. We mentioned combination running backs, wide receivers. Watch Eric Smith right here. Comes in motion. Now he's going to run a wheel route. He starts towards the sideline and turns up the field. Again, Mark, those hybrid running back wide receivers, a lot of motion. The West Virginia defense lost number 32, Eric Smith there. And Bob, we got Cody Burns in the game at the bottom of the screen right there. Now in motion. Oh, a little motion on that offensive line, number 73, Lee Zimba. 73 offense, five-yard penalty, first down. You said it, Bob, there's a lot of machinery into this offense. A lot of different moving parts and bits. And you know what? We have to give credit. Tony Franklin last year went through the growing pains in the same family of offenses. In other words, making that transition from the I formation power Auburn offense to the no huddle shotgun offense last year, they went through a bunch of the trials and tribulations. So Gene Chizik steps into a pretty good situation. But some of those bumps are over. <laughs> Hand off to Ontario Caleb. And Caleb brought down after a gain of a couple yards. So basically, you're trying to say that Tony Franklin, the previous offensive coordinator, <laughs> laid the groundwork for this get staff coming in and Gus Malzahn? He took the hit. He took the hit. Think okay. about Rich Rodriguez <laughs> last year in the same kind of transition at Michigan. From an I-formation power team to a spread team, they were awful. A year later, they're pretty good. There's Todd. Pretty good on that pass. Complete. To Tommy Trot is tight end, knocked out of bounds by Pat Lazier. Up to the 25-yard line, an 11-yard gain on the play. Well, that interception by Nico Thorpe changed the whole dynamics in this stadium for Auburn. Caleb is the lone back beside Chris Todd. Over the middle. Incomplete. No flag on the play intended for Tim Hawthorne. Number 20, Allen Mark, may have gotten away with one right there. Yeah, Boogie Allen getting his boogie on. <laughs> Breaking that pass up. Fourth down coming up. Five yards to go, and in comes the place-kicking unit. Wes Byram. It's going to come from about 42 yards out. Made one earlier from 46. They get it down, and boy, that is true. Two for two on the night. Bringing his team to within eight, and it was all set up by the interception from Nico Thorpe. We talk about being able to recruit here at Auburn. When you first walk into that locker room in that hallway, that's what you see. Vincent Edward Jackson's uniform and encased Heisman trophy. That's, that's a pretty impressive sight. It's impressive. And that locker room itself is impressive. 
Think about that extra hour in there when it was raining so hard. <laughs> I promise you the contrast between the visiting locker room that West Virginia was in compared to that Taj Mahal, <laughs> that's a heck of an advantage for the Auburn Tigers right now. Bo Jackson, one of the best ever to play at Auburn and in college football. Mark Rogers here takes a knee in the end zone. Let's check in with Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you. Number 17, Cincinnati on the road at Oregon State. Keep an eye on Marty Gilliard on the receiving end of a 14-yard pass from Tony Pike. That makes it 28-18, 312 yards and two touchdowns so far for Pike. Cincinnati moving up a little bit there. Uh, but Brian Kelly has done a great job with the Bearcats. We saw him and his crew last year. And just the University of Cincinnati and the commitment they've made to be a big-time player since entering the Big East. I mean, they've done a remarkable job there. Let's see how Jared Brown responds after throwing that interception, which led to the field goal a moment ago. Noel Devine, who has had a divine night so far. Gain of one on the play, and right now, Noel Devine, a big part of the storyline. 84 yards and a couple of touchdowns rushing. Coming up in just a few moments, Davey Jones' locker. Bob and I will talk a little bit more about Vincent Edward Jackson and the Mountaineer and Tiger decade contributions as we look back and uh, look forward in college football with these two programs. Brown seemed a little indecisive. Handing it off to Devine, but Devine picks up four anyway. Noel Devine actually was recruited by all the Florida schools. He's a, from Florida. Recruited by the Seminoles, Gators, University of Miami Hurricanes. Had some academic issues, and West Virginia just hung in and won the recruiting battle. And you better keep Jared Brown in that pocket right now if you're this Auburn pass rush. Third and five, he completes it for the first down at the 38-yard line to Jock Sanders. Talked about the Florida connection with West Virginia. And there's a breakdown by state, Florida, with 22 players on the roster. Actually, they got a real talented backup quarterback, Geno Smith, who's from Miramar, Florida, just down the block from Horst Truly's place. And here's Jared Brown in the open field and there's a flag down in the play brown down at the 40. Block in the back 82 offense 10 yard penalty first down penalty against Arnett Brown's roommate well Jimmy Johnson is racing for a historic fourth straight championship wow Chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup at New Hampshire. Coverage beginning Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern on ABC. The Mountaineers, uh, speaking of race cars, going back to Rich Rodriguez's day. Remember they had those different speeds, Bob? They had Indy. Indy was one of them, wasn't it? You talk about Jets. the different tempos they have yeah. coming out of the huddle. Another Tavon Austin, number one, in at the bottom of your screen right there. Another speed guy. That pass is broken up. No flag on the play. Good defensive play by Josh Bynes on West Lions. His second down and 16 to go. It's no interesting. West Virginia, five straight wins over Southeastern Conference teams. Not many teams anywhere can talk yeah. about five straight Southeast Conference wins in a row. Now that impressive one they had over Georgia in the Sugar Bowl few years ago. Second and 16. Divine in the backfield. Big tall West Lions at six foot seven lined up at slot receiver for West Virginia. You can see the size difference right there, can't you, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> Big at six four. seven, sure. <laughs> and not many guys at six seven line up in the slot like West Lions. Virginia, there is no penalty for delay a game. 
Mountaineers see this as an opportunity to make a statement for both the program and the conference. Back after this. drove clean diesel we could send it all back diesel it's no longer a dirty word you can't get kentucky grilled chicken on a value menu yeah you can now you can get the great taste of new kentucky grilled chicken for just 1.99 the new kentucky grilled chicken value box only on the kfc ultimate value menu on thing it takes the under two dollar side of kfc What a deal. Buy Guitar Hero 5 in September, and you'll also get the unreleased Guitar Hero Van Halen. Over 130 tracks, all kinds of rock. D for team. Sometimes being there means helping you afford everything a true fan needs. That's why State Farm has so many ways to save. So there's more for the little things. I had a pretty good job, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. And I thought, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. I probably don't want to do it tomorrow. And I told my dad, I want to start a brewery. I told him, I think you're crazy. I started Sam Adams with Boston Lager to make rich, flavorful beer. And he went and sold it one bottle at a time. No one had tried an American beer that had that kind of flavor. Boston Lager it really was a groundswell. There's that saying, do something you love, and you'll never work a day in your life. I don't feel like I've worked for 24 years. The Colts battle the Dolphins at 8.30 on ESPN Monday Night Football. Under the lights at Jordan-Harris Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. Welcome back to SEC Football on ESPN Primetime. A look at some of the headlines in the SEC. Florida, Alabama winners today. The other two teams leading at this point. And uh, Florida edging Tennessee today, Bob, a little bit closer than most people thought. Exactly, Mark. And you know, all the conversation about Lane Kiffin. <laughs> since he's oh, there was the Southeastern Conference. I mean, since the day he stepped into this league, it's kind of overshadowed Gene Chizik, Dan Mullen at Mississippi State. You know, there's three new head coaches in the Southeastern Conference, but you would think Lane Kiffin was the only one. Sanders. Brown bought him a little time, but Sanders couldn't convert, and he's brought down at the 33. All that motion and a gain of one. Michael Goggins is going to have a shot at Jared Brown right there. He is one of the niftiest guys in the pocket that I have seen. He has a great knack for avoiding that rush. It's the footwork, Bob. You know, he did play with Bob Huggins in his basketball team there at you go. West Virginia. Little shovel pass right there, complete. Divine. And a late flag after the tackle at midfield. Divine picks up 18. A very astute pass by Brown. Mark, I think Bob Huggins would love this little underhand <laughs> dump pass right there. That was an excellent devised call. A little underhand scoop pass to Noel Devine. That's going to come back because of a holding penalty. Now think about Jarrett Brown playing for Rich Rodriguez. Now Bill Stewart and Bob Huggins. He's got the whole spectrum covered there. <laughs> Third down and eight. Oh. Man, it's like he's in a blender, just spinning around. <laughs> they finally got to him back at the 26. A 
and you have to love the effort of Jared Brown. I mean, you don't coach this, you don't teach this. This is instincts. An excellent coverage. I can't, at that point, the coverage downfield was excellent and allowed that rush to finally get to Jared Brown. Second sack of the night for the Tiger defense. Kozlowski with the punt. Back at the 25-yard line, it's Gully. And he's brought down at the 32. A 47-yard punt. Seven yards on the return. Well, Bob and I have, for the first couple weeks of the college football season, been able to bring you Davy Jones Locker, a regular installment of interesting tidbits. Davy Jones Locker. You might know as an idiom for the bottom of the sea, and uh, during the course of the season, we're going to dig deep into our little chest and bring out things that are pertinent to not only college football, but maybe our game. And this week, we're going to talk about uh, Bo Jackson and the great effect that he has had and his journey here at Auburn and beyond. Here's the carry. That's Caleb getting a couple of yards. Well, Bo Jackson came to Auburn with a stuttering problem. Many of you may know that. He took public speaking as a part of, well, coming out of his shell here on campus. And, well, in May, he really capped his academic career here at Auburn as he came back to get his degree with a real special moment. Pass complete. Todd. And here's the moment of Bo Jackson I was referring to this May. Step outside of your comfort zone. Take chances. Not foolish chances, but take chances because you never know what the world has for you out there. Now Caleb, a nice game. Under four minutes to go, picked up six that time. And Bo Jackson did so many different things here, Bob, and it really proves that it's not the destination, but the journey that counts. The growth that he talked about in that commencement speech was very inspiring. No question. I mean, just looking it up with him, the presence he showed. And I'll give you a story about Bo Jackson. In, 19, in 1986, Cotton Bowl, when I'm at Texas A&M, we played against Bo Jackson. And we watched those tapes all year long and didn't think he was that fast. There's McCallum speaking of fast and speed, runs out of bounds. We didn't think he was that fast. You know, you, you watch every, no. Oh, even on tape? Not on tape, we did. Wow. In the second quarter, he caught a screen pass and went 73 yards down the sidelines in front of our bench. I turned to R.C. Slocum and I said, he's fast. <laughs> <laughs> the tape was lying. I'll never forget that. He took one 73 yards on us down the sidelines. Ran the 100 meters as a freshman and sophomore. Actually, thought about running on the Olympic team. Here's Chris Todd in at quarterback. Check that Burns completes it to the 26-yard line. And it's a first down on a 16-yard pickup. This offense starting to get into sync, Mark. And right here, you see the hurry-up part of it. Tate. And Tate across the 20 down to the 18-yard line. Picks up eight yards. Yeah, definitely is getting a little bit more rhythm. Under three minutes to go. And the Mountaineers call a timeout. Right now back on their heels a little bit. And Trooper Taylor doing his usual thing. Amped up. Welcome back, everyone, to SEC Football on ESPN Prime Time. 21-13, the Mountaineers with the lead, but with under three minutes to go in the first half. The Tigers marching. They have the ball on West Virginia's 20-yard line. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. Gene Chiswick in his first year as head coach on the sidelines here in the Plains. Cody Burns in the ball game. In motion right now to the top of your screen. <laughs> That's some moving parts. Isn't it? You see Cody Burns coming in motion, stops, slips. Go, go, 
All that in the handoff to Ben Tate. Busting his way down to the 10-yard line. You see right there, Mark, the difference in the spread offense from last year to this year with Auburn. More of a north-south I formation kind of run right there as Ben Tate just creases it right up the gut. First and goal. Tate again. Off tackle. Got about seven that time. Terrell Zachary and Brandon Hogan at each other. In a big way, second and goal coming up. Tenth play of the drive for the Tigers. Tate again, nowhere to go that time. Stopped up at about the three. Julian Miller made the stop. A moment ago, this is what it looked like between Zachary and Hogan. Primarily after the whistle. Fortunate right there. I think a good job by the officiating crew. A good no call. Just settle those guys down. Third and goal. Todd into the corner. Touchdown, Adams. Receivers coach Trooper Taylor. <laughs> Loving his guys' work. And it's a one-point game with 134 to go in the first half. Mark, when Chris Todd threw this, I said, oh, no, because he was kind of backing out as he threw it. But Darvin Adams beats Brandon Hogan in the corner of the end zone. Watch right here. I mean, he kind of throws off his back foot. Adams with his second touchdown catch of the night. A career high. Not bad for a receiving core who, and which is mainly comprised of Adams and Zachary. The two of them combined for all of nine catches coming into the season. Yeah, they told us yesterday, Darvin Adams was a little bit banged up. And how about Trooper Taylor? <laughs> Trooper Taylor played at Baylor when I coached at Texas A&M. He was at Tennessee as an assistant. He left and went with Mike Gundy to Oklahoma State. Now he joined Chiswick last year, his first year on this staff. Tigers moving at 11 plays, 68 yards, using up 324 on the clock. The complexion of this game, Bob, really changed when Jared Brown threw that interception after the Mountaineers had Great. been the beneficiary of a turnover. Great point, Mark. Rodgers on the kickoff return. And brought down to the 32-yard line. Let's go back to the studio in Wendy Nix. Mark, thank you very much. Coming up on the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report, a pair of upsets. Washington stuns USC and Florida State takes care of BYU. And at least on this night, Tim Tebow gets the best of Lane Kiffin. It's all coming up on the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report. All right, thanks a lot, Wendy. Another player from Auburn shaking up down on the field. Talk about some of the great players that have played for both these teams. Monday Night Football with an example. Miami Dolphins taking on the Indianapolis Colts. 8.30 p.m. Eastern time from Landshark Stadium. Ronnie Brown, former Auburn Tiger, plays for the Dolphins. And Pat White got in a bunch of snaps last week with the Dolphins as their backup quarterback in their Wildcat formation. One twenty-six to go in the half. Let's see what Jared Brown can do here. 
He's looked a little disconcerted on the last couple of sequences after that interception. Interesting, West Virginia comes out in the standard I formation. And all of a sudden, the I formation in college football is the changeup, Mark. You hardly ever see it. <laughs> Divine, who got off to a quick start in the first quarter, brought down by Thorpe and Stevens, picked up six on the play. Noel Devine last week ran for 80 yards in their victory against East Carolina. Remember, a year ago against Auburn, had a career-high 207. On second and four, Jared Brown going to pick up a first down and then some. Out to the 45-yard line, under a minute to go, but the Mountaineers out of timeouts. Take a look at Bill Stewart. Really a lifetime assistant and really kind of a low-profile assistant at that. Remember, took over for Rich Rodriguez after he was the interim head coach in the great Fiesta Bowl win against Oklahoma. Brown almost intercepted again by Nico Thorpe, who had one just a few moments ago. It was intended for Wes Lyons. That's a case of Jared Brown staring down Wes Lyons. And Nico Thorpe got an excellent jump on that football, really by reading Jared Brown's eyes. I and mean, he was going to Wes Lyons from the moment that football was snapped. Brown with that little shovel pass, underhanded pass again to Devine, who's tackled at about the 47 by Blank. It's going to be third down coming up. About six or seven to go for the Mountaineers. The clock running now. They're out of timeouts. Watch this play by Blank 93, Mark. He retraces his steps. Watch big 93. Fool me once on that play. But don't fool me twice. <laughs> That's the end of the first half of play. Actually, there's two seconds still showing on the clock as Auburn calls timeout. <laughs> Prior play that the runner was down before the ball came loose. Didn't know that that was an issue. Yeah, they, they're going to see if that football came loose Bobby, before look at he was down. Well, if you look at Bill Stewart and Gene Chizik, his counterpart, the game clock. their situation's a little bit different. Stewart came in a year ago with a different type of pressure and atmosphere than how Gene Chizik came in just recently as their head coach here at Auburn. Well, and uh, I'm going to review this. I think play. the ball comes out late. I think he was down, and the ball came out way late. Mm. So Mike Blanc on that great effort right there, retracing his steps. But, Mark, getting back to your point, they're similar in that both of these coaches face some negativity after taking the job <laughs> for different reasons. I, I mentioned Bill Stewart, a lifelong assistant, never a high-profile coordinator, takes over for a really, really high-profile coach in Rich Rodriguez. One more look at it. I think that's um, obviously he, Noel Devine was down before that football came out. Let's look at Bill Stewart, one of the really nice guys, Mark, in college football. And then all of a sudden that works against you when you're a head coach because the first thing they say is too nice. Too nice. <laughs> <laughs> but nine and four last year, off to a good start this year. After further review, the runner was down before the ball came loose. It will be West Virginia's ball. Please reset the game clock to seven seconds. Now you wonder. Seven. West Virginia with no timeouts. Auburn stops that clock. If West Virginia takes a shot on a Hail Mary, That'll be the worst decision Auburn's ever made. <laughs> wow. Brown. Down the middle. Completes it. They're going to run out of time. Jock Sanders down to the 25-yard line, and that'll do it for the first half of play. A first half that saw 
West Virginia looked dominant early in the game, and then Auburn, courtesy of a couple of interceptions, one of them from Nico Thorpe, come back and come to within one. Right now, we're going to go back to the studio, join Wendy Nix, Robert Smith, and Todd McShay for the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report. Welcome, everyone, back to SEC football on ESPN Primetime. West Virginia up by a point against Auburn. As we get started here in the third quarter of play, the Tigers will receive the ball to begin the period. And right now, time for the first half stats brought to you by Guitar Hero. Look at these stats. We thought it would be an offensive explosion, and West Virginia Mark certainly started out that way. 200 yards offense in the first quarter ends up with 291 in the first half. Auburn fought through that initial onslaught of West Virginia, ended up getting on rhythm a little bit there, and those points off turnover. So I thought Jared Brown got a little bit sloppy at the end of the first half. The interception to Nico Thorpe, the sack, the fumble, 10 points for Auburn off of turnovers. From the 15-yard line, McCaleb. And he's brought down at about the 31-yard line. And, uh, Bob, you had mentioned that you thought we would see a lot of points coming into this game. Your thoughts on the diversity of the types of offenses we've seen so far from the two teams? Yeah, we've, we've seen a lot, although they seem pretty similar. I, I think the only difference is Auburn tries to hurry up the tempo a little bit. But you can see that this West Virginia defense probably has an advantage because have been, have been through the Rich Rodriguez era. era. They're not the least bit confused, in my opinion, by this Auburn offense. The problem, their two best defensive players are out and have not played tonight. Yeah, Reed Williams and Scooter Berry. Auburn with the ball on first down out to the 36-yard line. That's Ben Tate. Remember, Auburn beginning this game as the number two rushing team nationally. And the only team in the country that featured a couple of rushers in Tate and McCaleb that ran for over 100 yards a game. Here's Mario Fannin. And Fannin is stopped up after a gain of about one. And you have to really be impressed with this West Virginia defense, Mark, when you mention those rushing statistics. You know, Auburn only rushed for 50 yards in the first half. Came in averaging over 340-some yards a game rushing. Pretty impressive defensive display, I think, by West Virginia so far. Third and five coming up. Darvin Adams has been the really big receiver in this football game for Auburn. Number 89 down here at the bottom of your screen. Already has a couple of touchdown catches in the game. And they come his way. Chris Todd completes the pass near the 45-yard line for the first down. You look at these rushing statistics. Keep in mind, both these guys, Mark, come in averaging over 100 yards a game rushing. As I said before, I mean, this West Virginia offense has played, or defense has played to run extremely well. Then Tate takes it east-west and is brought down at the 40-yard line. Pat Lazier, the first one there, and there's a look at Scooter Berry, the starting defensive end, unable to go tonight, as is Reed Williams, the starting middle linebacker right there. West Virginia playing in that 3-3-5 alignment. On second and 15, Ben Tate smashing ahead one more time. Bob, how unique is that 3-3-5, and how's it helped West Mark, Virginia hold tonight? Sure. I mean, it is unique, but Gus Malzahn, when he was at Tulsa, keep in mind Todd Graham was the head coach at Tulsa who had come from West Virginia. <laughs> so Tulsa was a 3-3-5 defense the entire time Gus Malzahn was there. So he is very familiar with the alignment of the 3-3-5. On third and long for the Tigers. Todd is going to be sacked. Back at the 36-yard line, Sidney Glover. And it's fourth down coming up. The Tigers will have to punt. 
Watch Sidney Glover. He's going to come from the bottom of the screen. Ben Tate has him. Just a very poor job by Ben Tate in pass protection. They had the right numbers, Mark, to pick that up. Ben Tate, just a poor job. Durston to punt. Brandon Hogan back at his own 23-yard line. Chance to underscore the point that West Virginia had some issues of their own in special teams, especially punt return last week. Hogan captured this one cleanly and is brought down immediately at the 24-yard line. Well, Jimmy Johnson racing for historic fourth straight championship. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup at New Hampshire. Coverage beginning Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern time on ABC. The first down and 10 for Jared Brown in the Mountaineers offense. Over 87,000 on hand here at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Let's look at Noel Devine. has been a huge part of this offense for the Mountaineers tonight. Little receiver screen complete. And a nice run after the catch by Brown's roommate, Arnett. Yeah, here's the, the smurf of all smurfs right here. Noel Devine, right here the speed mark of just running past the angles of the Auburn secondary. Started out on fire as did this West Virginia football team. Auburn maybe adjusted a little bit to that speed as the game went on in the second quarter. Here's Devine again. Well, he gets going in a hurry. Gained about three on that play. The coach is telling us, Bob, of all the speed guys they have on the team, nobody's faster in the first 20 yards than Noel Devine. Same high school as Deion Sanders down in Fort Myers. And you talk about a tough, tough upbringing and early childhood. This guy's story here is amazing. Something in the water down there in Fort Myers. Seven starters from the state of Florida for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Arnett in motion. <laughs> Boy, Brown, a magician with that ball. Keeps it himself. Tiptoes out of bounds. Let's see where they spot this. They're going to give him a very favorable spot up near the 40 at the 39-yard line. He picked up two on the play. Kind of lulls you to sleep a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Kind of a big, long strider, but how many times does he break contain? Again, number 52, Antonio Coleman had him dead to rights, Mark. Yeah. On second and eight. Pass complete to Sanders. Jock Sanders makes a move, and once again, a display of what speed can do for you. On the edges, Walter McFadden finally making the stop. But a pickup of nine and a first down for West Virginia. Yeah, Auburn, a lot of missed tackles. You look particularly against Jared Brown. But right here, four angles. Right here. Great tradition of defense yeah. over the years here at Auburn, but not a great night tackling trick play right Brandon here. Brandon Starrs, a former quarterback, throws it back. It's complete. Sanders and Jock Sanders down to the 20 and a late flag on the play. Bradley Starks came to West Virginia as a quarterback and a thumbs up from his head coach, Bill Stewart. A 32-yard game. Mark, again, the trick play. You mentioned Starks, a former quarterback, but watch another missed tackle right there by number 25, Darren Bates. Mark, again, I go back to that concept of not breaking down in the open field and gathering yourself yes. and getting under control on defense. Again, you saw Darren Bates, really the first guy trying to run through the ball carrier right. and missing. Brown pushed out of bounds right near the line of scrimmage. You know what, Bob? He played on Coach Huggins' basketball team at West Virginia. I don't want to make too much of it, but seems to use that pump fake pretty yeah. well. And he better be careful. One thing I have noticed, 
he gets a little bit sloppy in ball security. Mm. You know, at some point you might give a little pump fake, Mark, but then hold that football high and tight. Ted Roof right now, this defense is under duress a little bit. Oh. Brown escapes again and tiptoes out of bounds near the first down. But a nice move on Zach Clayton, who's still looking for him. Picked up eight on the play. Let's talk about, again, ball security. You go back to that last play. There's the pump fake. Now, look where he's holding that football, Mark. I mean, you never know. Yeah, that ball easily could be stripped out. You never know who's behind you. So at some point, Bob Huggins, <laughs> teach him to tuck that football away in the open field. Well, at that point, he's pulling up for his jumper. <laughs> You love those ball fakes, don't you? Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and room to go. <laughs> Touchdown, Divine. <laughs> that was a very <laughs> impressive drive by West Virginia to start the third quarter of play. And the third touchdown of the night for Noel Devine rushing. The north-south ability, and that's a sigh right now. Not of relief, but by disgust by Ted Roof. But Noel Devine marked the ability to go north and south. Devine now has run for over 100 yards in the game. It's the tenth time in his career he's done that, and they missed the extra point. Tyler Bittencourt pulled it to the left. Bill Stewart in his second year as head coach looking to make a statement. SEC College Football on ESPN Primetime. West Virginia leading by seven after the missed extra point a few moments ago by Tyler Bittencourt. But an impressive opening drive. Eight plays, 76 yards, using up a little over three minutes on the clock. And Noel Devine with his career-high third rushing touchdown of the night. A man from Fort Myers, Florida. It's an amazing how a guy like Jared Brown totally under the radar because of Pat White. He's every bit as elusive as a run as Pat White. You just never really had a chance to see it on a consistent basis. He waited four long years for his chance on the kickoff return. This is Terrell Zachary for the Tigers. And Zachary stepped out of bounds at the 81-yard line. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 43. Yard penalty, first down. Let's get back to Davy Jones' locker and uh, talk about the coaching situation with Auburn vis-a-vis -vis West Virginia and Gene Chisholm. Mark, I mean, usually when a, when a guy's first name head coach, there's a bit of a honeymoon period, you know, where, where everything is positive. That really wasn't the case with Gene Chisholm. You know, a high percentage of the Auburn fans, people around the country, negative really because of his 5-19 and 19 record at Iowa State coming in. But I think people overreacted to that record. Keep in mind, Pete Carroll was the sixth pick at USC. And USC fans were in an uprage over him getting that job. Things have worked out pretty well for him. This is Ontario McCallum. Another name, Pete Carroll may be the best coach in college football. Bill Belichick fired at Cleveland. Right. People up in arms in New England. You know, what's important to keep in mind? That old saying, it's not how you start, Martin. It's how you finish. Bottom line, he's 2-0 and right now. Forget about 5-19 and at Iowa State. Here's Chris Todd on the run. Completes the pass to Fennin. Oh. And what a great move by Mario Fennin. Still on his move. Super Mario looking for the six. Touchdown. Eighty-two. <laughs> 
two yards. Look at Bill. He said, what just happened? I saw number 27 right run right by my entire defense. His fifth touchdown catch of his career. It's like you were saying a moment ago, with respect to the coaches, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, and he finished it off pretty good. Back to a one-point game when we come back. Makers of Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans. Build comfortable, priced right. And a look at Toomer's Corner, one of the real landmarks here off of uh, College Street here in Auburn, Alabama. Bob, but, you know, if they serve up a little Splenda, you know, I'd have had a big glass of that stuff, but yeah. I'm, I'm trying to drop a couple, so. <laughs> I'll tell you, whatever. You deserted me on the chicken wing now, circuit, hey, so. Whatever these Auburn, Auburn fans <laughs> did early this afternoon, I've been impressed with them because they are going strong right now. This is Rogers on the kickoff return, found a nice alley. And Rodgers with a nice return over the 35 to the 37. Bob, what was key on that hey, touchdown I run? want you to take a look at this, Mark. Mario Fannin, he's lined up in the backfield. Now, he's going to sneak out of the backfield. That's not my point. It's going to be a simple little, you know, five-yard throw. But now, as this thing rolls, we're going to stop it right here. Now, you tell me, what are the odds that he's going to run through one, two, three, four West Virginia players, and that's going to be a touchdown? I wouldn't give you good odds on that. No, I mean, he was boxed in, but another example, Mark, on both sides of the football of poor angles and poor tackling in this football game. Tied at 27, little receiver screen to Jock Sanders. That time, some solid tackling by Josh Bynes, middle linebacker, four-yard gain on the play by Jock Sanders. Do you see how the game of football has changed so dramatically? in the last five years of just getting the ball out in space and letting guys make plays. Yeah. That's what it is, Spreading right? people out. It's like you said, you wouldn't know what to do if you saw a power eye formation. You know, even when Jarrett Brown is sacked, he's pretty exciting. Although he did gain one, not quite a sack. Looked like he was going to be. That ball's still kind of loose, ball. Darn right. I mean, he's down there on option. Now, when you tuck it, tuck it away. See him swing that football back away from his body? He is going to get tomahawk before the night's over now. tackled right near the first down marker it appears as if he got about six which would be enough and once again a clutch play by Jarrett Brown yeah Mark and that's really frustrating for the defense you know it's a third down situation good coverage good pass rush it's just one guy Jarrett Brown making a play but you have to reload now and this is where the mental toughness of a defense all of a sudden it's first down again line up and play Mountaineers able to score on their opening drive of the third quarter. Here's Ryan Clark in the backfield. And Clark between the tackles out to the 47-yard line. A nice gain of about five. It'll be second down and five. West Virginia, some big mistakes. Mark, let's go back to the missed extra point. The interception by Jarrett Brown when they were just steamrolling Auburn. Auburn, no, hang around, claw back in, an even football game. This game has had a lot of swings in momentum. Well, Devine dotting the eye. Ryan Clark, the fullback. Jarrett Brown. Wendy Nix, they call him Jay Brizzle. Back to you in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, thank you. Georgia at Arkansas, Matthew Stafford and Noshaw Marino. No, that was last year. How about Joe Cox to A.J. Green? It's a shootout. 
regardless forty nine thirty forty nine forty one with about seven to play in the fourth quarter that game over on yeah espn and sec update alabama wins big lsu and dan mullen gets his first win give me sec right wendy and brown hands it off to divine did well to get a short gain on the play picked up one and boy what a crazy day this has been so far started off with the torrential downpour right around the time we were supposed to kick it off or maybe 15 minutes before kickoff and they tried to empty out the stadium told the fans they had to evacuate and the ones that decided to stay stayed at their own risk we had a couple of lightning spottings and they brought the teams back out and then uh, West Virginia came out like a couple of bolts and lightning and put some points on the board early. But Auburn rallying late in the first half of play with 10 points in the second period. And right now we're tied at 27 apiece. Look, I believe it's Antonio Coleman, number 52. They told us yesterday, Ted Roof, and we met with Antonio, not only their best player, but their best leader. Came back for a fifth year. You see Gene Chizik out on this football field. This guy here is as respected, probably the most respected football player yeah. along with Cody Burns on this football team. Yeah. Said that he decided to come back because he didn't like the taste that was left in his mouth. But bilious taste after the 5-7 and seven season last year and a lot of inner turmoil and controversy. And, boy, you talk about Antonio Coleman. He has seen a lot of different defensive wow. coordinators and coaches come through the doors here in the plains. Yeah, Will Muschamp, David Gibbs, Paul Rhodes, and Ted Roof. That's four defensive coordinators in your five years at Auburn. And he has literally seen it all here at Auburn. Played in high school with Jamarcus Russell down in Mobile, Alabama. On second and nine. Devine brought down, actually Brown brought down after a short game, got back to the line of scrimmage. Almost looked like Brown slipped, and, and maybe that field, Bob, is a little more damp than we think it is at this point. Mark, let's take a look. You're right. I mean, right there, no question. And anytime you play on a wet football field, you just have to be a little more cautious. And there's Trooper Taylor, the receivers coach for Auburn. That guy is one piece of well he's a human bottle of Red Bull I think Brown complete <laughs> there's our big man and he's still on his feet down to the 26 is West Lions the six foot seven inch target picks up 13 and a clutch first down on the conversion yeah, the tallest slot receiver in the country <laughs> got to be right all these Smurfs and now you've got the big six seven slot receiver coming in that has had a bit of a hamstring injury. He had a great spring. He really had the light come on, as the coaches like to say. Sanders in motion. Complete little hook and ladder. Divine inside the 20. Boy, we're seeing the whole box of tricks from both teams in this. Jock Sanders caught it and lateraled it to Divine. Seven-yard game. I know you love these kind of plays right here. <laughs> uh, the little hook and lateral. Number nine, Jock Sanders to Noel L. Devine. Lots, adding lots of flavor on that stake today. Second and four. Tenth play of the Mountaineer drive here. Sanders. And he's brought down shy of the 15-yard line. A four-yard gain on the play. 2.36 to go in the first, uh, pardon me, the third quarter. You know, we, we talk so much about Auburn and their wide receiver reverses and misdirection. Keep in mind, Bill Stewart is not the offensive coordinator. It's Jeff Mullen, who came from Wake Forest. And if you think back to those Jim Grove teams at Wake Forest, Mark, one of the first that did a lot of that wide receiver rocket motion kind of scheme. And there you saw Jock Sanders on the reverse. 
Devine again. Devine methodically picking up five yards. And this drive moving rhythmically down the field and chewing up a lot of time on that clock. Under two minutes to go in the third you, quarter. Excuse me, Mark, how you have to defend the whole football field. One time it's east and west on a reverse action. The next time it's a north and south straight up the gut dive with Noel Devine. So, I mean, you have to, you have to vertically and horizontally defend everything. There's Devine in motion. <laughs> Jarrett's bringing him back now. I don't think you were supposed to go in motion there, Noel. A little uh -oh. ad lib. There he goes. And after all that, what's Brown going to do? Throw it away is what he's going to do. That thing imploded almost from the very beginning. Third and five coming up now for the Mountaineers. I thought Jeff Mullen made a good point as we look at Bill Stewart. He said, every pass they call at some point has the potential to turn into a quarterback draw for Jarrett Brown. So if the receivers aren't open, when that clock ticks off in his brain, it turns into a quarterback draw. So watch right here on third and about six. Got to get to about the six-yard line for the first down. Brown dancing around in the pocket, and he throws it away. And he ended up on his backside. Jake Ricks with good pressure on Brown. Fourth and five, and in comes the field goal unit led by Tyler Bittencourt. Let's watch late right here. Really kind of refreshing to watch this as it plays out. Keep watching. Keep going. It it's... took a while, but <laughs> there was some sportsmanship there at the end. Just business, not personal. And Bittencourt knocks it through from 28 yards out. Mountaineers take a three-point lead with a little over one minute to go in the third quarter. Run may model turned quarterback, or is it the other way around? He's doing a nice job. Back after this. Push-ups. That's what the Mountaineer mascot has to do for each point. So that means she's doing 30 push-ups and 30, kind of a benchmark number for the Mountaineers. Kind of a barometer for their success or lack of. They've won 60 of the last 61 games and they've scored 30 or more points. And how about Auburn? 151 consecutive games scoring 30? Yeah. Something's got to give tonight between. A lot, of, a lot of West Virginia fans made it down to the plains. Yeah. They have great fans in West Virginia now. You talk about, I probably shouldn't say it, Marshall's in the state as well. But West Virginia football in that state is big, big, big. That's why when Rich Rodriguez left, that was such a story. Yeah. That broke their heart. Pretty passionate about their football up there in Morgantown. Just like in the state of Alabama, right, Wendy Nix? No question about that. And how about in the Longhorn State? You only have to look to last year to know Texas wants this one big time over Texas Tech. Colt McCoy to Dan Buckner. Three-yard strike to make it 31-17. But just over two minutes later, Taylor Potts to Jermaine Swindoll for the score. Three touchdowns for Taylor Potts. 31-23 over on ABC. That one getting a little bit more interesting. Cody Burns in. Todd out at the receiver position, and Burns keeps it on the direct snap. Falls forward to the 33-yard line. Well, Peyton Manning of the Colts face off against, speaking of the Wildcat offense, the Dolphins and their Wildcat scheme. Colts-Dolphins, ESPN Monday Night Football coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Here's Burns, keeps it this time, nowhere to go, brought down at the 31-yard line by J.T. Thomas. Don't be repeating those plays on these West Virginia Mountaineers <laughs> now. Gus Falzon came back with the same exact play. Didn't work the second time. You know, the one thing that's a little tough now, all of a sudden Chris Todd back in at quarterback. He hadn't been a quarterback for two snaps. Now he comes back in on a big third down. I mean, it gets you a little bit out of sync offensively. Here's Todd, who's thrown touchdown passes on two of his last three passes. 
That one complete at the 43-yard line for a first down to Darvin Adams. He picks up 13 and comes up hobbling a little bit. 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Well, they can't afford any injuries at wide receiver, Mark. They are so thin at that position. This may be reviewed right here. I'm sorry, it's the end of the quarter, yeah. Yep. Depth and issue. Adams trying to shake it off. Holding up four fingers, signifying the beginning of the fourth quarter when we come back to the Plains and Auburn. One of the top 30 plays right there, and Turner Gill winning the MAC championship last year with Buffalo. Did a great job up there. And Turner Gill, one of the candidates that interviewed here for the head coaching job that ultimately went to Gene Chiswick. Ben Tate on first down. You know, I'll never forget, by the way, I'll never forgive the NCAA for banning the fumble Ruski play. You know, just, just one more play that Gene Chizik and Gus Malzahn would probably have in their book here, right? Do you really want to see the game come down to total trickeration? <laughs> Don't you really want to see offensive guys and defensive guys compete on a level playing field? Do we really need to trick people? I like some game? smoke and mirrors once in a while. Here's Ben Tate. Now that's Nothing. football. Yeah, you're right. You got a point there, Bob Davey. That's, that's straight ahead. Stop me if you can. A pickup of 12 by Ben Tate. Auburn down by a field goal. Mark, look how deep Ben Tate is in the backfield. Here's Tate again. This time right of bounds. The point I was making, Mark, they have deepened that tailback up. Look, he is behind the quarterback right here, which gives you more of a north-south downhill run. I mean, that's really kind of like an eye formation run right there. People talk about the pistol. Well, really, the pistol is putting that quarterback, that running back, deeper than the quarterback in the shotgun to have this kind of effect. Here's Michaela. Actually, Todd keeps it himself. And remember that this is an offense that they want to get the ball to the official immediately after the play ends and get up to the line of scrimmage and snap it. Yes. They want to try and get 80 to 90 snaps in per game. An average, Bob, would be about how much? Probably 65 snaps wow. a game. So that tells you how fast they're going. Third down and four coming up. Todd to pass under heat. A missed tackle and incomplete. He avoided a sack, though. Got away from JT Thomas and Pat Lazier. Fourth and four coming up. Mark, one of the toughest things, and you hear this all the time, is running backs learning how to pass protect. And that time, Ontario McCaleb, the young freshman, was in there at tailback and could not block the outside linebacker from West Virginia. You notice now Ben Tate back in that football game. Is are going to go to a quick kick right here? Chris Todd out of the shotgun. I'll take that back. He's going to throw the Boy. football. Incomplete. And the Mountaineers take over on downs. So this funnels us to perhaps the questioning of the play calling for arguably the first time tonight. A Mark, pivotal point. I have to wonder, as we look at this formation right here, both running backs up in wing positions and a tight end, I thought they were going to pooch punt the football right there. You wonder if the quarterback automatic based on one-on-one -on -one coverage out there to the pass. I really believe that was a pooch punt formation. I may be wrong, but that was an odd-looking formation to throw the football in. First and 10 for the Mountaineers. Brown downfield. Incomplete, intended for his roommate, Ulrich Arnett. Good catch on the sidelines. <laughs> State trooper that made the grab? He's getting a lot of back slapping over there. That made his night right there. Let's take a look at it again now. Hey, somebody's got to bring law and order to the gridiron, right? <laughs> That's a West Virginia state trooper that came down tonight. Second and ten. Oh. Intercepted. 
Jake Ricks. Um, that's the first time he's thrown that overhand and not underhand. But it doesn't matter because that's the third turnover in this game to West Virginia that potentially is going to lead to points right here. Watch again. Remember he's run this little shuffle pass underneath. There he flipped it over the top. And how about big Jake Ricks right here? Good hands by the big fella. You never know when a big play is coming, do you? You would never have thought that Jake Ricks intercepting a shuffle pass may be the key to this football game for Auburn. Off of the hands of Devine and first down and 10, working with a short field from the 19-yard line. Ben Tate in the backfield beside Chris Todd. Tate drops it. It appeared to be thrown behind him. It'll be second and 10. Mistakes by West Virginia. They have shown their potential. They've shown their explosiveness, but they've also shown their vulnerability. It's West Virginia defense playing without two of its key cogs tonight, Reed Williams and Scooter Berry. A couple of starters. You know, Mark, I haven't really felt the super fast tempo of Auburn like I thought I would, to be quite honest. Let's see what they do here on second. Todd unloads, caught, and stopped immediately. Eric Smith brought down by Sidney Glover. He picked up two on the play. Why do you think it is they haven't gotten up to the tempo they wanted to? I don't know. And they do have different tempos, you know. They actually have, uh, you know, they call it pace plays, where they get up there and just snap it quick. They also have a fire alarm where they huddle real close to the line of scrimmage and sprint up there. But I haven't felt them really quick snapping West Virginia all night. Again, it's been a lot of this similar to last year's Auburn offense of looking over to the sideline, getting the checks from the sideline. An offense that uh, was initiated by Tony Franklin a year ago, the former offensive coordinator under Tommy Tuberville. Third and eight. Todd. Wow. Touchdown. The third of the night for Adams. First lead of the night, Mark, yep. for Auburn. Yep. What a night for Darvin Adams. And after every play, as Gus Malzahn tells his players to do, you must hand the ball to the official. Mark, after every West Virginia turnover, Auburn has come back and scored in this football game. Finding the right answers. of age it's all about war eagle here in auburn alabama they really are passionate about their football here in town and jordan Hare stadium packed tonight over 87,000 on hand witnessing a pretty high scoring football game 34 to 30 the tigers with their first lead of the night rogers at the seven And the alley quickly closed down at the 23-yard line. You see what Jared Brown can get going here after the turnover, which led to that score a moment ago. Auburn was 17 points off turnovers tonight by the Mountaineers. Two of those turnovers by defensive alignment from Auburn. Jake Ricks with the interception, and then Blum with the sack and the cause fumble. From the 25, first and 10. Devine actually ran into his own man that time, picking up a yard on the play. 
Trooper Taylor, Bob, getting his troops on point and amped up. <laughs> he should be wearing equipment out there. <laughs> energetic, energetic guy now. <laughs> On second and eight, little receiver screen incomplete intended for Arnett. Well, as for Taylor, it's the way he begins every one of his days. Look up. <laughs> Ooh, I'm with you, baby. I'm with you. This is my new dog right here. Let's go get him, baby boy. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I'm sitting on G waiting on O. You know I'm ready to go. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Let's go. Heads up. You don't think those recruits don't love that? Those were recruits standing over there on that sideline listening to that. Yeah. So, you know, that Coach Taylor is pretty cool. <laughs> Brown, with great escapability, picks up the first down to quiet the crowd. Stevens making the stop after the 13-yard run. And go back to what Jeff Mullen, the offensive coordinator, told us. Every pass quickly turns into a quarterback draw if he doesn't get what he wants to get. They told Jared Brown that he doesn't have to be Pat White to be successful. He's doing a good job of being Jared Brown upfield. And this one incomplete and a flag thrown. Arnett being covered by Walter McFadden. McFadden seemed to have that, that DB lean going on into the wide receiver, Arnett. Yeah, and the, and the question, was the ball catchable? Now, that might be what Gene Chizik is arguing, Bob, just what you said. Yeah, let's look at a couple of things. Let's see at the end if this football was catchable. Close. Close. I mean, that's a tough, tough call right there because that really is pretty good coverage. I mean, no question McFadden, you know, extended the arm on him. That's a tough call right there to make in that situation, though. McFadden, one of the real voices of that Tiger defense. Folks, Jimmy Johnson racing for a historic fourth straight championship. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup at New Hampshire. Coverage beginning Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern time on ABC. It was interesting. We had a chance to meet with Antonio Coleman yesterday. He said that Walter McFadden was really the speaker box on defense. Guys, listen to him. Boy, Jarrett Brown, with a lot of machinations and movements back there, runs for four yards. Looks like he's dancing by himself back there sometimes, Bob. <laughs> Ball fakes, pump fakes, fake handoffs, fake passes. And look, Antonio Coleman back in at defensive end for Auburn. That's a great sign. He's out early with a hand injury. On second and six, little receiver screen complete. Jock Sanders got a nice block on the edge, and he doesn't need much help. Sanders with a first down at the 28-yard line. Nice block by the lanky 6-7-inch West Lions, and he picked up 14 on the play. Out near fans a little bit happy and amped right now. Well, if you don't walk out with a linebacker and cover down on these spread receivers, they just raise up and throw you the football, and that's become a huge play in college football. Here's the reverse. Sanders, and there's going to be a flag. Looks like Antonio Coleman was held on the play right in front of the official at the 30-yard line. Yeah, Mark, you saw it all the way. Ryan Clark, the freshman running back, held Antonio Coleman. They're going to place the ball 
you can After read the penalty back you, at the 38. Okay, you can read Bill Stewart's facial expressions pretty good too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about him being the lovable, fun, yeah. kind of your favorite yeah. uncle type of guy. He's a pretty animated guy yeah. now. Favorite uncle just got a little mad. Divine. Boy, when he gets to the edge, people start holding their breath. Divine pushed out of bounds at the 29-yard line. With 9.15 to go in the fourth quarter, he got back nine yards after the penalty. It's opened up a whole game for the five, seven guys around the country. Mm -hmm. Recruit the Smurfs, put them in open space, and find ways to get the football out on the perimeter. Mm -hmm. Second and 11. Boy, look at this, an eye formation. Divine brought down after a gain of about one by Josh Bynes. It's one time no, Noel Divine a little impatient there, Mark. He should have hit that thing up in there a little bit north and south. I mean, he went to the cutback almost immediately. Pivotal point of the game right here. And Ulrich Arnett, number 82, their leading receiver. Not much action tonight. Brown. Intercepted at the 12. McFadden. There's a flag down back of the 10. And McFadden still on his feet, one man to beat. There's another flag down. There's a flag back at the five, and also one near midfield. With the fourth turnover of the night for West Virginia. Remember, it was Walter McFadden that was victimized on that pass interference a little while ago. Miscommunication between Wes Lyons, the receiver, and Jarrett Brown, the quarterback. Let's take a look right here. Look at the bottom of your screen. Jarrett Brown thought Wes Lyons was going to do kind of an out and up in the fourth turnover of the night for Auburn. You can see right there the miscommunication. Each time that the Mountaineers have turned it over, Auburn has been able to turn it into some points, and McFadden a little shaken up after his interception a few moments ago. First and ten from their own three-yard line. And if you go back to Pat White, and I don't mean this as a knock to Jared Brown, very explosive player, Mark, but he protected that football and didn't turn it over. Right now, that's the difference between Jared Brown and Pat White. Tate hit immediately and broke a tackle, made it back to gain about a yard on the play. But a second down and nine, and Lock running with 7.45 to go in the game. It's a rematch of last year's game in which the tables were turned. West Virginia trailed by a couple of touchdowns, 17-3, then rallied to win 34-17 up in Morgantown. Burns was in the ballgame in motion. Ben Tate with the carry. Talk about these turnovers, Mark. First of all, two key plays by defensive linemen. You look at Blanc right there with the strip. You look at Jake Ricks right here with the interception. Two big turnovers by defensive linemen led to two scores by Auburn. The other two turnovers by the corners, McFadden and Thorpe on interceptions. But the four turnovers, the story to this football game. Well, Ted Roof said, hey, we need a couple takeaways. They've gotten some. Todd with a great ball fake of his own completes the pass. That's going to be a first down. Eric Smith on the catch. 
And they keep the chains moving on the gain of seven yards. And a little boot action. Eric Smith sneaking out of the backfield. Both teams with three timeouts remaining. And here's where it really is about running that football. You know, we talked to Gene Chizik yesterday. One of the reasons he got this job was he focused on Auburn football, running the football, physical. Now you see Cody Burns in the Wildcat. Burns keeps it. Brought down at about the 12 yard line. And Bob, we talked about it a little bit earlier. This transition that Gene Chizik's staff is making started in essence a year ago under offensive coordinator Tony Franklin. I think that's a huge point. I mean, I said it was very similar to Rich Rodriguez's first year at Michigan. They were in the spread last year, had a lot of bumps, a lot of problems, but they're a better football team right now because of that, I promise you. Here's Chris Todd. Watch out. Ooh, that was dangerous for the Tigers. Sidney Glover almost had a chance in interception. And Gene Chizik, pardon me, Bob, has had a chance to really sell the history of this rich program, and he's made the players recite the creed and get them to know the creed of Auburn again, which is, I believe in Auburn. I love it. Well, Jay, Jay Jacobs knew exactly what he was getting, the athletic yeah. director, because Gene Chizik coached here. He didn't have to interview him. He knew exactly what he was getting, and you have to give him credit for that. Chris Todd, the pass is going to be ruled complete at the 27-yard line, Tommy Trot. Now Auburn will hurry up so this can't be reviewed now. They will snap this football quickly. See that? <laughs> Not quite. They tried. Yeah. They tried to That's go to the, the hurry fire up alarm. <laughs> they call that the fire alarm. Let's get up and snap it. Ooh, Mark. Tommy Trot, who we weren't sure was going to play tonight because of injury, actually tore his ACL last year, hurt his knee a little bit. Let's take a good look at this one. This is very close, and this is a key, key play right here. It's a better angle. Mark, I think it hit the ground. Yeah. Yeah, from that angle, it looked like he didn't quite get his hands underneath it. But again, it was ruled a catch. The evidence has to be conclusive to overturn it. I think the nose of that football was on the ground. Yeah, we're going to find out. And uh, in the meantime, Bob, back to Gene Chizik, some of the changes that he's made, some of them significant, some cosmetic. He talked to us about how he switched up the meeting rooms for the offensive and defensive units and uh, basically told the players that I'm going to give you guys everything you need to do well here. And I want our players, he said, to understand how special this place is while they're here, not afterwards. Well, you know, he's following a guy that had a great run. I mean, Tommy Tuberville, 10 years at Auburn, great success. Now, he was 5-19 and 19 at Iowa State. He lost his 10 games. But you have to give Jay Jacobs, the athletic director, a lot of credit, Mark. He knew the firestorm that would come just because of that record. But my point is, Gene Chizik coached here as a defensive coordinator. Jay Jacob knows him. Probably not conclusive evidence to overturn that call. So Chiswick's Tigers keep possession of the ball. It'll be first down and 10 as they look to go 3-0 and and put this one away when we come back. Plenty of time to go. Well, the weather was the big story early. This game delayed for a little over an hour. We're supposed to kick it off at 6.45 p.m. local time. We had a little over an hour delay because of the lightning in the area and the severe weather warning. Once we got underway, boy, we saw a different type of lightning and fireworks. A lot of points on the board tonight. First and 10. And Tate breaking a couple of tackles. And Tate. 
for the first down, picking up about 16 and a late flag thrown near midfield. Now they're going to talk about this a little bit. Casey Vance gets called for the face mask for the Mountaineers, and that pulls puts the ball on West Virginia's side of midfield at the 42, first down and 10 for the Tigers. Well, it really helps, Mark, to have a big physical back like Ben Tate late in these football games now. Well, Bob, tell me why the spread offense is a little bit of a misnomer, because they really talk about run and play action. Yeah. Right, the well, Tigers. they spread you out by formation, but it still comes down to the running game. Keep in mind here, look at Ben Tate. He's almost in the eye formation back there. He's so deep. There's Ben Tate again. This time only picks up about two yards as we go back to Wendy in the studio. Wendy? Mark, thank you very much. Texas and Texas Tech. This one now in the books in Austin. This would be the final score. It would be the only touchdown. Colt McCoy threw that one to Dan Buckner, the final 34-24. Florida over Tennessee, USC falls to Washington, BYU also upset by Florida State. College game day final with Reese, Mark, and Lou coming your way, 1240 ESPN. All right, thanks a lot, Wendy. Second and eight here. Notice Auburn using all of that 40-second clock now, Marcus. It's down to five seconds. Changed gears on this offense. Ben Tate lunging forward. Brought down to the 39-yard line. Peyton Manning and the Indianapolis Colts face off against the Dolphins in their Wildcat scheme. Colts-Dolphins on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 7 o'clock Eastern time. You'll see Ronnie Brown, former Tiger, running back. And Pat White, former quarterback for the uh, Mountaineers. And West Virginia used the timeout there. And you know a guy we need to talk about is Chris Todd. The quarterback from Auburn. You know, last year, not healthy, played shoulder surgery in December, had no velocity on the football. The fans booed him. <laughs> the football team was divided. He had no spring practice. Came in and won the job. And you talk about a background now. Yeah. Goes to high school in Kentucky. His dad's a coach. He goes to Texas Tech for two years. He leaves Texas Tech, goes to Hutchinson Junior College in Kansas. Comes in here really because of Tony Franklin, last year's coordinator, who he had a relationship with because he was a consultant for his high school when they put the offense in. It's been a long journey. But, you know, that kid, he's thrown four touchdown passes tonight in this football game. That's 16 of 30 overall, Bob, uh, for 284 yards. Big third down, Mark. He had a rapid recovery from that surgery you mentioned and able to rock it all the way to the top of the depth chart. Third and seven. They're coming after him. He got it off and incomplete. Boy, they were in hot pursuit. Goldburn was a hair away from bringing him down for a sack. And he had Mario Fannin wide open, but you mentioned just so much pressure he could not get the football out of there. You're going to watch right here. I mean, West Virginia comes with the field blitz, about five of them coming from the field. He rolls out just not enough steam right there to get the football to Mario Fannin. And West Virginia, with two timeouts, in a position to take this football game and get on the field and win it, Mark. It's just a four-point game, four minutes to go. Low snap. It was bounced back to Durst. And this one goes into the end zone. They'll come back out to the 20-yard line, so plenty of time to go on the 39-yard punt. West Virginia, 80 yards away from making it happen. Back after this. The Colts battle the Dolphins at 8.30 on ESPN Monday Night Football. Scientific test proof. When you drink Dr. Pepper slow, 23 flavors taste even better. For me, slow always produces a hit. Step aside for a minute. Check this out. Slower is better. 
trust me. Doc. There for you and life's daily miracles. Who's the best? This guy is. San Diego's lightning bug, Darren Sproles, lights up the Broncos, racking up 317 yards. The defense couldn't see him, and neither could you. Because you were traveling? Ever hear of a little thing called the internet? Well, now with DirecTV, you can go online to watch any game wherever you are. Check it out. It's like a portable man cave. Watch your team wherever you are and get five months of our best TV package for free. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. The Seafood America Loves is now America's best deal with Long John Silver's new dollar stretcher menu. Try the new 99-cent Baja fish taco, the new double junior fish sandwich for $1.59, or shrimp and fries for just $1.99. Long John Silver's. Craveable taste, lovable prices. Texas fight, Texas fight, and it's goodbye to A&M. Texas fight, Texas fight, and we'll put over one more win. Yeah, we're Texas, just north of Mexico, home of the armadillo, black gold and El Arroyo. What is that? It's just freestyling. We don't freestyle Texas fight, big boy. Think you know? Text CGD to 43776. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, Saturdays at 10 a.m. This football game right now is Tyler Bittenkirk missing this extra point mark in the third quarter. If he makes that extra point, it's a three-point game, and West Virginia's playing for a field goal to tie it. Instead, it's a four-point game, and they need a touchdown to win it. That's a huge difference right now in this football game. Jared Brown's certainly capable. 34 to 30. First down and 10 for the Mountaineers. Incomplete, intended for West Lines. Well, both teams at that 30-point mark, and good things happen for both of them. West Virginia's won 60 of his last 61 when scoring 30 or more. Auburn's won 51 consecutive games when scoring 30 or more. So, one of those uh, going to come to an end tonight. West Virginia with only one timeout left in this Here's game. Brown. On the screen, into traffic, picked off! Touchdown, Stevens! That fan is texting back right now and says, take that play out of the playbook if you're West Virginia. That's the second interception on that middle screen tonight. And that is five turnovers in this football game for West Virginia. Very un Jarrett Brown like. Well, they all led to score. You're talking about five turnovers that all led to scores. Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, told us yesterday they've got to get some takeaways. They've gotten a lot, Bob. Let's take a look at this. It's, again, the little middle screen. He wanted to go underhand. He went overhand. Craig Stevens tips it to himself. Well, look, he wanted to go underhand, Mark. Flipped it over the top. That, that indecision really cost him. And the happiest guy in Jordan-Harris Stadium. <laughs> Athletic director that made the hire. <laughs> Don't think for a second <laughs> he doesn't realize <laughs> how big 3 and 0 for Gene Chizik is. Forget Former about lineman, 5 and 19, right? Mark. Yeah. Forget yeah. about 5 and 19 Iowa State. That's a long time ago. Different place. But you know what? This young guy right here, we talked about ball security. I thought he would get stripped because he hangs that football out. But it did come down to ball security with the interceptions and the sloppiness. Auburn has been extremely opportunistic tonight on Jared Brown turnovers. And right now the Tigers 
looking to atone for losing against the Mountaineers last year, leading by 11. It looks like nothing else on the road right now, proclaims GQ magazine. Did you see that? The interior positively oozes class, raves car magazine. Slick and sensuous, boasts the Washington Times, the most striking VW in recent memory, declares... Okay, I get it already. I think we were in a car commercial. Two for one. What a deal. Buy Guitar Hero 5 in September, and you'll also get the unreleased Guitar Hero Van Halen. Over 130 tracks, all kinds of rock. D for team. This fall, don't just get more out of your tires. Get more back from your tires. Because with Cooper's National Take the Money and Ride Fall Event, you'll not only get unbeatable performance, you'll get a prepaid rebate card by mail worth up to $75 when you buy four qualifying Cooper tires. Cooper's Take the Money and Ride Fall Event. Get your rebate form and all the terms and conditions at a participating Cooper Tire dealer or at coopertire.com. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. Sam Adams Boston Lager is my favorite because it has so much flavor. So I wanted to design a glass that would enhance the taste of Boston Lager. We did a laser etch on the bottom. Releases the hop aromas. This bulb is for collecting aromas and there's a little ridge on the inside. And that allows you to sense the hops as it enters your mouth. The way this hits your tongue, you really get the full flavor out of Sam Adams Lager. Having a Boston Lager in this glass was like tasting a Boston Lager for the first time again. It's Applebee's 2 for 20, the one deal in the neighborhood where you get real food. Featuring a half rack of our new double glazed baby back ribs with your choice of sauces. Get one full size appetizer and two real entrees for just 20 bucks. It's 2 for 20, only at Applebee's. Well, the old saying goes that revenge is a dish best served cold. This one tonight has been served cold and wet so far by the Auburn Tigers, leading 41 to 30. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey here at Jordan Hare Stadium on a night where we got off the kickoff an hour late because of severe weather in the area. West Virginia Mountaineer fans looking a little downcast right now. They start thinking about that long drive home right now. <laughs> but West Virginia with three interceptions on the last three possessions, Mark. Flag on the play. The ball rolls out of bounds. And no matter how successful a season Auburn will have this year, if they do have one, Bob, it will always be measured with reference to their neighbor down the road in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Well, there's no question about that, Mark. And you know they have Ball State coming in here. Ball State has not won a football game this year. Then they go on the road, Tennessee, Arkansas. Tough away schedule, obviously. I mean, they're in, <laughs> they're in the Southeastern <laughs> Conference, but you're right. I mean, the success that Nick Saban has had at Alabama, no question has raised the stakes right here. Because Tommy Tuberville had great success against Alabama. Turnovers telling the story of the night. 340 to go. Brown escapes when it looked like he might be sacked back at the 32-yard line. Great pressure by Nick Fairley. Jared Brown down. The backup quarterback, Geno Smith, is a true freshman quarterback. Out of Miramar, Florida. From Florida, and that does not look good right there. I mean, he's clutching that left wrist, obviously in pain. He took a it. hit after he got rid of the ball. Yeah, Nick Fairley at about 300 pounds landed totally legitimately on top of him. But, boy, I really, really hate to see this. I mean, Jared Brown paid his dues waiting four years to play. 
Think of all he has invested, Mark. Yeah, it almost seems unfair that after waiting for as long as he has to take over from Pat White that uh, he should be able to play the season without injury. You see the concern of his teammates over there right in front of that West Virginia bench. I mean, he's in pain. He'd come into this game with some pretty good stats, but having a tough time tonight on the interception front. It's been a tough night, Mark. He's really played the key role in five turnovers in this football game. Here's the first interception by Nico Thorpe. This was huge. Here's one of two interceptions on the little middle screen. Here's the other corner, McFadden, with the interception. And then the last one, the game breaker, Nick Stevens tipping the ball up to himself. And then the fifth turnover was the sack in the bubble. So Jared Brown, five turnovers tonight, but bigger than that, Mark. Just the human side of this story. This guy waiting all those years, and now what looks like a, I don't want to speculate, but a pretty significant wrist injury. Gene Smith, the new quarterback, true freshman out of Miramar High School in Miramar, Florida. And he got rocked, knocked down by Antonio Coleman, who was shaken up earlier in his comeback. Well, Gino goes down a little bit easier than Jared Brown goes down. <laughs> There's no question, because Jared Brown would have bounced off that one. Here they go. Smith completes the pass. Whew. Nice move by Jock Sanders. And Sanders' forward progress going to be marked at about the Auburn 48-yard line. Geno Smith at about 6'3", 195, a good-looking athlete. One of the top 6A players in the country last year. 14-yard gain on the play. Smith up top. And it's incomplete at the 25-yard line. A wrestling match for the ball between Nico Thorpe and Bradley Starks. 2.49 to go. West Virginia with just one timeout remaining. Mark, you have to, you know, this Auburn team, 5-7 and seven last year, 2-6 and six in the SEC. Chance to jump out 4-0 and oh in this season. Smith complete, uh, incomplete. Boy, in and out of the hands of Bradley Starks. A clear drop. Got to help your quarterback out a little bit. Welcome, everyone, to the SEC on ESPN College Football Primetime. A game which has seen Auburn come back from being down early by a couple of touchdowns. This one's complete. Came right back to Starks. Starks pushed out of bounds shy of the 40-yard line. Dean Smith, a high school All-American. Well, it's a ball game right here. Fourth down and about three. West Virginia obviously has to convert right here. Tough spot for the true freshman to come in. Thank you. Tell you. With two teams that run this fast tempo offense, I'm surprised that we don't have a little more, have some more mishaps with the clock. Fourth and three. They need to convert. Picked off. Josh Bynes with the interception. Another Mountaineer turnover. by the Auburn defensive line. They were in the lap of Geno Smith. And Mark, this crowd's wet. <laughs> they probably don't smell great, but they're enjoying the heck out of it. Watch the push up the middle by Auburn's defensive line. Steps up in the pocket, just gets engulfed in the sixth turnover of the night. And how about Gene Chiswick? That's the best feeling in the world right there, Mark. I knew his defensive coordinator, Ted Roof. And that's about the worst feeling. Yeah. Cody Burns in a quarterback. And Burns keeps it himself out to the 45-yard line. Picked up five on the play. Clock Big running. story, Jared Brown. West Virginia moving forward. The health of Jared Brown. 
leaving Auburn, Alabama tonight. Yeah, the Big East Conference play still ahead of oh, this team. They're going to be a player now. Don't think for one second they won't have a chance to win the Big East Conference. Nine and three a season ago. Second and five coming up for the Tigers. And you think about the road that this Auburn team has traveled in about a year. Bob, you and I saw them a year ago at this time against Mississippi State. Here's Burns going to run it again. Burns was the backup quarterback going into that game a year ago from Mississippi State. Here we are a year later, different coaching staff. He's the backup quarterback again, but under much different circumstances. Yeah, and Auburn has a long way to go. Gene Jizzy will be the first one to tell you West Virginia helped Auburn immensely tonight. You don't turn the ball six times, turn it over six times. I mean, they have almost 400 yards offense, West Virginia, but the six turnovers killed them. But what a positive start because now those players, they buy into what you're selling if you're Gene Chisholm because it all comes down to success, Mark. He likes to use the analogy of stocks, telling everyone he's going to be a little cautious about buying stock in Auburn, a sack that time on Chris Todd by Sidney Glover. But the uh, Tiger portfolio looking a little bit brighter after tonight's performance. Under a minute to go with 55 seconds to play. As for the Mountaineers, this is what they'll be facing in the ensuing weeks. Still a long way to go. This college football season still in its embryonic phases. Colorado bounce back today. Shout out Wyoming. And you see Syracuse, Marshall, Connecticut. I mean, they will be right in the middle of it. And all of a sudden, Cincinnati, huh? <laughs> the Bearcats, the team to beat in the Big East, got a big win, I believe, tonight out at Oregon State in Corvallis. Tony Pike, one of the top quarterbacks in the nation, and Gilliard, that receiver. Mark, you know, people probably get tired of hearing from us how unique the Southeastern Conference is. But that rainstorm tonight, and then the reaction of these fans by sitting through that rainstorm, the music playing, they're rocking. That's another reason it makes this conference unique because they didn't bail out of here, and it rained about as hard as I've ever seen it rain. Yeah, the game, if you're just joining us, was delayed for a little over an hour. Here's the punt from Durst. Here's going to let it bounce and it'll bounce all the way down inside the 15 yard line you know when the rain was coming down you know who my MVP was Bob Davey the PA announcer and the public address worker because they put that song on Creedence Clear, Clearwater Revival CCR right have you ever seen a rain yeah kind of liven up the party a little bit believe me they, <laughs> they're they moving and shaking listen. a little bit <laughs> yeah, here it is I mean this is in a torrential torrential downpour right now you're not going to ask me to sing that song. <laughs> but it really is. It's exciting to see, isn't it? I mean, when you talk about an event, these college football games are events now. Gene Smith back in the ball game after the interception completes this one to Jock Sanders. And we can't leave the air tonight without talking about the Washington Huskies oh. and Steve Sarkeesian. Huge win. Park. That's an unbelievable win. We had the Huskies last year late in the season against Notre Dame. It was like a funeral out there. We had them early in this year against the LSU. They, it's a remarkable, remarkable turnaround. Huge transformation. And things looking a lot different in the Pac-10 as a result. Smith completes the pass to number four, West Lions. Five seconds to go. West Virginia started off out of the game real quick. But they're going to end up on the short end of this one. And Gene Chiswick's team can atone for the loss last year up in Morgantown, 34-17. to 17. He said something real important when he talked about the scrutiny that he faced. He says he doesn't look to anyone or anything for validation. He gets it from within. Well, the scoreboard is going to do some validation tonight for the Tigers as they win it 41 to 30 improving to 3 and 0 on the season. The Mountaineers meanwhile falling to 2 and 1.
was the story of the night. The Mountaineers had way too many of them, including some very untimely picks that led directly to points for the Tigers. Once again, the final score, Auburn winning at 41-30. Coming up next, NHRA Carolina's Nationals qualifying. There's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Stiff neck for one coach and it's all smiles for the other. For Bob Davey and the rest of the gang, I'm Mark Jones. So long, everybody, from Auburn.